evening, everybody. It is uh, just about 6.30. We're going to start the uh, meeting. Um, can I um, call the meeting order and get an exception to the agenda? Absolutely. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous. Okay, so tonight we are reconvening on um, the sewer project that we talked about for uh, Cedar Point. We met about six weeks ago, maybe? Uh, 4.29. Okay, 4.29, great. Right? Yes. And three months ago, and um, asked um, the DPW to go back and speak about what our options are, kind of get a better of an analysis of what the situation is out there. And they've done that work, and they've got a report and a presentation for us. And they're going to, we're going to turn over them in a minute and let them go through the presentation and, and tell us what they found and what they recommend and all that sort of stuff. Um, any summary or any questions before we get started? Great, I'll turn it over to you, Kevin. Great, thank you. Um, so just as we said before, we met on 429 um, to discuss the contract. Uh, we requested to have another engineering firm look at it. We had a certain set of standards. We went for, um, we issued a contract for Woodward and Curran, no relation to select and Curran. Um, I had met with Dave Ball after the meeting, and we didn't want to go through the usual con engineering firms that we did. He had suggested we would turn because they were doing work that was similar and all. So with that, um, we gave the contract to them and Jason and Rosemary are here as well as Will and they will give a presentation on what they found and um, after the presentation they would be more than willing to take any questions. All right, my name is Rosemary Blackier. I'm from Wooded and Curran. My uh, peer here is Jason Creel. He also works at Wooded and Curran. I do project management, I do planning, I do permitting. I am housed out of the Dedham office of Wooded and Curran. Wooded and Curran is a fairly new engineering company to situate. I can say that we have been working with the regional partners, Helen Cohasset, doing a little bit of planning but doing actual wastewater work in Situate, we're a fairly new company. Jason and I are both housed in the Dedham office of Wood and Curran, so it's fairly close to here. So we were tasked with looking at the Cedar Point area and infiltration and inflow issues that seem to be chronic in that area. We were tasked with reviewing previous reports, reviewing capital cost records of the town, any data that the town had relative to this area. Um, we looked at the previous report that was done in 2016, 2017, looked to see if there were some additional testing that could be done, and looking at an alternatives analysis. And Jason's gonna go through all of that. Jason is the technical partner, I'm the planning partner. With that, we looked again, like I said, we looked at all existing data that the town had. We looked at a lot of cost <coughs> data, the expenditures that the town goes through for the wastewater system, targeting just Cedar Point area. Um, we looked at costs associated with alternatives. For those of you, I don't know if everybody understands what infiltration and inflow is. It's commonly referred to I and I, and it's it, it's not a friend of a sewer system. It's when clean water somehow gets into your sewer and it travels through all your infrastructure, through your pump stations, into your treatment plant, and the town is paying to treat, basically treat clean water. It um, comes in through infiltration, which there's a um, pretty good visual that we put in your handout that shows cracks in pipes, the uh, sewer pipes that exist now out in the Cedar Point area are old clay pipes and with age, with settling in the ground, those tend to crack easily. Uh, the other thing is there's a lot of seams in those types of pipes and anytime those seams come apart, just like uh, that shows in the visual, um, that can let water infil infiltrate into the pipes. The inflow can come from a number of areas. It can come from sump pumps, it can come from roof drains. Um, those are the things that we, we looked at targeting just this area. We looked at, uh, the town had done a report in 2016, 2017, 
and it looked at the whole system. What we did with that report is we targeted right in on just the Cedar Point area. So we extrapolated a lot of information in order to give you um, an idea of what's, what's it experiencing underground in the pipes. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Jason. Jason's going to explain the actual technical work that we did on this. Thank you, Rosemary. Uh, please let me know if you can hear. I can speak louder. Uh, uh, Fourth, thank you for having us in this evening uh, to review this. Uh, my name again is Jason Creel. I'm the technical manager here with Woody and Kern. Uh, as Rosemary indicated, uh, based on some conversations that, and the request to put this uh, together, we, we went ahead and we took a look at the report that was performed by CBM Smith in 2016, revised in 2017. Specifically looking at Cedar Point, which is in that report, area 4-2. Um, so Rosemary pointed out, you know, without more knowledge, you understand that that area was constructed in the mid 1960s uh, with clay pipe. Clay pipe typically has a 50 year service life, it has been in the ground longer, uh, but in general, our design standards are 50 years. Uh, we noticed uh, both from looking at the video and discussions with uh, some of the folks in town is that several rehabilitation projects had been already performed in that area to line the pipes uh, in an effort to correct cracks, fissures, and breaks. Uh, one item that we noticed in those videos is that there were some uh, some items that cannot be fixed by, <coughs> by lining, uh, such as sags, which are generally generate a failure of the subsurface bedding. And that can happen, especially when there's a lot of uh, groundwater movement. Uh, obviously, the report also showed generally high groundwater conditions. Uh, the area is low lying along the coast. And the gravity pipes <coughs> in this particular area are located below the low tide line. So to continue the summary, Oh, this is now behind me. So, forgive me, uh, the back of my head for a second every now and then. Uh, area 4.2, 4-2 uh, Cedar Point was rated the highest area for II in the system. Um, it was commonly in the top four in almost every category in the CDM Smith report. Uh, and one of the recommendations coming out of that report was to potentially replace that with low pressure sewer. Uh, after reviewing that report, uh, it was clear that there were recommendations for additional work that could be completed in that study area. In, in general, looking at the results, and I have those tables uh, here, you can take a look at them, but they were just simple plots from that report, uh, there was clearly a large tidal influence uh, when it was mapped. Uh, but that may not tell the whole story as far as inflow. So what we did was, in addition to what was already completed by uh, CDM Smith, uh, we did some additional testing. And that additional testing included uh, salinity testing and smoke testing. Uh, I'm going to take these out of order for just one quick second. Uh, smoke testing is typically done to identify inflow sources. That's flow coming directly into the system. That could be uh, anything from a rain meter on a house to a cracked pipe uh, adjacent to a home to a catch basin, yard drain, uh, typically ways that water can go directly into your sewer system. Uh, we performed that uh, just a few weeks ago on a uh, generally a very pretty quiet day, and so you know, generally what we saw was smoke coming out of the locations where it is expected to exit the system. And that would be roof vents, uh, plumbing stacks. Uh, what we did see was, in general, we did not see smoke coming out of manholes, uh, manhole frames and covers. 
for uh, out of the ground. I believe we did have one indication of light smoke coming out from under a crawl space. Uh, but I believe that was above the ground, and I would defer to Will on that one um, if there's any additional questions or detail on it. But typically, something like that is above ground. So unless there was an inundation, that's likely not a contributor. Uh, we did note that after some of the manhole covers had been dislodged to do the testing, we did see some smoke coming out of them. Uh, but in the general condition of those, that was not unexpected. Uh, the second uh, item that we did was the salinity testing. Uh, in that case, we were looking to see how much, uh, how much salinity are you seeing in the wastewater. We're using that as an indication of how much, what percentage of that water is potentially seawater. locations around Cedar Point. Uh, a seawater sample was taken uh, down near the lighthouse on the harbor side. Um, that uh, came out to be about 25, uh, about 26 parts per thousand salt water. Uh, 28 Lighthouse Road was about 12.75. 56 Lighthouse Road was about 15.1 and 53 Rebecca Lane uh, was 1.05. Uh, I will point out these addresses are roughly the location of the manholes. They have nothing to do with the with the homes themselves. Uh, and what I really want to point out to these is more their relative numbers as opposed to the absolutes. But in that case, by the time the flow gets down to uh, near the neck, you are looking at you know half the concentration of seawater. Yeah, the other thing to note on page 10 of the presentation is the top picture is a manhole that um, Jason can talk to that when they were doing the smoke testing when they took the manhole covers off you could actually see the water coming in at the invert, right? Jason, if I can interrupt for one second. Yes, so, sir. Just so we can digest those numbers for a second. So at the bottom of your screen there it says Ocean concentration average is 35 parts per, what's the thousand. piece for? Thousand. thousand. That's the ocean? That would be. So the one that is that 26 is, is three quarters ocean water. Yeah. Again, it's on the harbor side, so 25 is typically considered brackish. Similar locations where we do salinity testing on the coast, some of the neighboring communities. Uh, I'm told that they typically get uh, roughly a 32 as opposed to the 35, and they, they actually use that for calibrating their equipment. Okay, and then the other two that are more on the point, it's a third to a half Correct. ocean water. Okay. And one other quick question, just to clarify, the smoke testing, we, the reason we talked about doing the smoke testing is because we didn't know if there were a thousand small holes in the system and that that was causing the problem. So. If I understand you correctly, that was not the results of the smoke testing. The smoke was only coming out where it was supposed to come out? So yes, generally the, the, the purpose of that smoke testing was to help us isolate whether there was a potential for other inflow sources out there. Uh, and what we saw was that there do not appear to be other inflow sources out there. Okay. Thanks. I just have one more question. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sure. That was the question I wrote down as well. So, so one of the reasons that we wanted to do smoke test is that there was concern that a lot of it was from laterals. So this this shows that that's not the case. And then, just to further clarify, so or can you tell from that? No, you wouldn't be able to tell from that. That would be so. Smoke testing is an inflow detection method, okay. uh, as opposed to an infiltration. If it were a large failure in a lateral. You may see smoke, but that's assuming that it can make it through the soil to the ground surface. Right. Okay. Uh, it, it's not unprecedented to see that, but we did not see that in this case. Okay. Thank you. Uh, to Rosemary's uh, earlier point, uh, I'm going to 
Uh, Rosemary pointed out while we were performing the smoke testing, uh, we, uh, we did observe, and I apologize, the, the photo is not uh, spectacular, uh, but the photo here noted leakage at flow channel observed. Uh, at the bottom of that mantle, that, that pipe was lined. It was, there was a lining that was moving from the upstream side through that mantle to the downstream side. The top of that liner was removed uh, for an open access flow channel. Uh, and there was actually, there was flow visible coming out between the original brick mantle in, invert, the, the flow channel itself, and the liner in the bottom. And that's not atypical uh, with lining projects uh, because liners may or may not adhere to the carrier pipe that they are installed in. And typically, we take some additional measures when we line to try and protect from that happening. Uh, I'll say typically, those measures uh, will not outlast the liner. The liners will much last much longer than the seals that we will put in for that. Uh, and the top corner of that is a snapshot from uh, some of the CCTV inspection video that we reviewed that was provided by the, by the town. Uh, the CCTV. Uh, this there was some CCTV uh, performed in that location in 2011, and again in 2013. Um, this is just a sample in this corner of what was viewed in some of that video. Um, in this case, you can just see it's a it's a fairly substantial leak, uh, circumferential at a joint. Uh, as Rosemary pointed out, it's clay pipe. Uh, in this case, during that review, we found that these are, uh, it is vitrified clay, it has two foot joints. And it was unclear from the video uh, what the, what if any uh, sealant was used in the joints. Uh, once we concluded that, uh, the review of the CDM report and the additional uh, effort to try and identify the inflow, uh, we performed an alternatives analysis. And with that, I'm going to stop you for one second. Yes, sir. So before we get to the alternatives, does anyone have any questions on what they've said so far or what they've identified? So it seems to me that. The problem is not a thousand cuts because the smoke really didn't detect that, and that there's a lot of seawater coming in there, um, and we're processing a ton of seawater through the sewer system. Let me just make one adjustment to that yeah. statement. It may be a thousand cuts of infiltration, but it is not inflow. It's not. So infiltration is, to Rose Rosemary described earlier. Typically, where flow is coming into the pipes underground, and that may or may not be visible. That typically would be visible in the CCTV. Uh, if it was active, it may also be noted by staining or um, direct visual observations of the leak. Uh, so, for instance, the leak that we observed while we were doing the smoke testing is it was a fairly substantial infiltration. Do you guys have any questions on? Does anybody out there have so that quick that uh, excuse me, shot? Excuse me. Yes, sir. What's your name? Uh, my name is William Farmer. I own the property at Honey River Becker Road. Uh, I have a couple questions about slide 11, the salinity test. I noticed that that was only conducted at four points. Is there a reason for that? Is that a slow test? The salinity test was only done in four places under slide 11. Yes, sir. Uh, why is that? Do you send samples out to a lab? Uh, it, was a it was just a limited test to get a rough idea of what the salinity was at different portions of the system. Well, my impression from your data is that the salinity is greatest uh, out near the lighthouse, and it drops down from dilution rather than more infiltration as you go towards the neck. So, so let me just be clear on that one. The, the lighthouse sample was actually taken from the harbor. 
That's, that's correct. That, that, was our, that was our control. All right. And the other three, so actually what we're seeing here, to look at, again, the limited data set to give us an idea of how this is working, yeah. is that farther out toward the lighthouse, you're seeing less salinity. And as all that flow commingles and comes together and works its way down toward Jericho Lane, it's being diluted by sewage. It, it's no, it's actually becoming more. It's more saline. There's more salinity as it moves through the system. You're picking up more infiltration as you move through the system. Uh, I have the impression that 12 and 15 are smaller than 26. One out of lighthouse. You said that's actually the water. Correct. Right. Because that's not that is not your wastewater. That is that is seawater. They tested the ocean for that. That's that was from the harbor. Seawater direction. was about 26. Correct. And your wastewater you, should be close to zero. By the time you get to the neck, it's 12 and three quarters. Yeah. Correct. So the seawater mostly was present at the uh, south end, and it's being diluted by sewage. Right? You've only got four data points on the whole sheet. No. So so what you're actually seeing is. At 53 and at 56, you're seeing, actually at 53, Rebecca, you're seeing very little salinity. Right. Do we and have two at, sewer lines or one sewer line? You have a sewer line in each road. Or how many? One in, well, you have one sewer line in Rebecca, one sewer line in Lighthouse. All right. And they're both moving north. Okay. They're collecting flow and moving to the north. So the so, problem is on the Lighthouse road <coughs> side. Presumably, since there's not much salinity being picked up on the Rebecca Road side. At, at, at that location, yes. Yeah. Now, I would suggest you need a lot more data for the salinity measurements. And I, I tried to reach Ms. McCaffrey two months ago. I couldn't get a call back. But this is all you need for a real time salinity measurement that can be taken in as many places as you want, probably one every day. So let me volunteer that that probably should be done to extend the net data to this test. Okay, we, we've got a test sample here. We've got a sense of what's happening from what we have here. If they think they need to do more testing later, then they'll, then they'll do well, it. What, what I see as a result here is of the two sewer lines, there are no leaks on the one on the uh, eastern side. There may be leaks on the one on the western side, but you don't know where because there's only two data points along the way. Can I show I would suggest it would be good to get multiple data points. Thank you. Um, just a question on, on that. When you say that some of the pipe is, is basically at groundwater, I mean, and this is I'm not a scientist, is the, how brackish is the groundwater out there? Because there's two different things going on. One is seawater pouring in, and the other is the groundwater itself, which presumably in other parts of town doesn't have salt. So I'm just curious. Do we know that? Do you have a sense of? Are you asking the salinity of the groundwater in that location? Uh, I, I, we didn't test it. Look, we don't have a my, groundwater My test. question is that if, even if, it's, if there's water pouring, uh, coming in on that line, you can tell from other testing measures, the salinity would not be the only factor about how much is getting into that second line. Correct. Okay. Sir, did you have a question? Oh. Yes, yeah, I name, name and address. Tom Gallagher, 35 Lighthouse Road. The snapshot of the infiltration on that large main, was that before or after the lining? When you retrieve that information from the sewer department, was that, that top right hand, is that obviously it looks like it's before the lining? If you don't know, just say you don't know. Yeah, I, 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 well, I can see, I mean, it looks like it's before the lining to me. 2013 is post lining. Yeah, I, I would have to go back and look to see what they took from that, for that photo. Did you have any um, Just your name and address. Michelle Loring, 67 Rebecca Road. Um, I just wanted a clarification back on the parts per million of salinity. Um, our part, that was parts per thousand on salinity, right? Because I think that um, somebody on the board may have interpreted that 12 as being 12% salinity of the water, we're talking 12 parts per thousand, correct? That's correct. No, we weren't, that wasn't, we were comparing it to seawater and what percentage of, I mean, if the seawater's at 25. Oh, I see, okay. And it's 12, it's about half of those, if it's 12. 
Okay. And yeah, it wasn't part of the Great. Is everyone ready to go along to the alternative? Um, the alternative, I'm sorry, the alternatives being how to fix it? The next part of their presentation. Oh, the next part. I just want to make sure I understand that they didn't perform um, a bunch of the tests that CDM Smith, you didn't perform any new uh, television camera work of the sewer, is that correct? It is. In, and you didn't do any um, flow isolation tests? Correct. Correct. I did not. So you have to be cognizant. Um, the CDM report from 2016 looked at II system wide. So it looked at the whole sewer system. The recommendations in that report were not for every single area identified. So in looking over the uh, CDM report, the two tests that look to be uh, the most appropriate for the Cedar Point area was the salinity testing and the smoke testing. That's why those two were chosen to be performed. The town had done a significant amount of the CCTV, which is putting a camera in the pipe in 2011 and 2013. So it didn't make sense to spend town money to look at that again. Okay. Um. I'm looking at the CDM Smith report. I'm looking at area. I'm looking at area four two. I'm looking at what their recommendations was. I'm looking at their footnote saying that their investigations. This is CDM Smith, right? The October 2016. I'm looking right at it, and I'm seeing that it says the inspections that they are recommending for our area include flow isolation, cleaning and CCTV inspections, smoke testing, manhole inspections, and multi-sensor inspection where applicable. And I'm also looking at this report, and I'm seeing that their low cost to fix this is $700,000. Right. And I'm looking at their footnote saying that that's $700,000 to fix problems that they think might be there, assumes a 15 to 20 percent, 10 to 15 percent manhole sore uh, open cut with replacement, 50 to 70 percent cured in place pipe, assuming 50 to 70 percent manholes will need to be rehabbed and sewer services. So I don't know what part of this report you're saying did not recommend these things. I would ask you to read to the group footnote number seven. I know what footnote number seven. But read it so that everybody can see it. Oh, everybody has heard me talk about footnote number seven. <coughs> footnote number seven is the absolute only place in any report, anywhere, that the town has that mentions that they might replace 1.7 million would be the cost, and they're explaining it to replace it with Brian Price. Right. And, and I that think is the absolute only place where this is ever mentioned and everybody's heard it. Right. And I think the reason why that recommendation was put in that specific table is because they were talking about a significant amount of rehabilitation work. And they were pointing to EX sub area 4-2 as being very expensive if it could be repaired. And their recommendation for a resolution would be to replace the gravity sewer with low pressure. <coughs> Those are the things that we looked at. And I think we were very cognizant spending town money on testing, looking at, based on the experience that we have, <coughs> looking at what is going to be the most appropriate for this area. And that's where we came up with the salinity and the smoke testing. Uh, yes, sir. Your name is Why is the um, salinity 100 high house growth sewers? So Okay, the we cannot hear this question. <coughs> Excuse me. Why is the salinity stand up, sir? Maybe they'll hear in the back and ask nicely. <laughs> Why is the salinity at 100 lighthouse road so low than like 30 percent lower than the average ocean? Where'd you get the 100 lighthouse road sample from? That sample was retrieved from the harbor. <laughs> I just wanted to speak to the, the question about why a sample from the harbor was taken. Um, and that was a recommendation that we made in the field. Uh, we have you know, statistics about what the average ocean salinity is, which we can see at the bottom of the page. 
Uh, but I recommended that if we obtain an ocean sample from this location, it would provide a much clearer picture for an actual comparison as opposed to going off of a guideline or a blurb from Google. Uh, this is more of an actual representation of the salt content in the ocean water in that area and how it directly relates to the salt content in the found in the wastewater system. Should you take two samples, one from the harbor, one from the ocean side? Uh, just, just from the harbor side. But they didn't, sir. Okay. <coughs> Yes, sir. Dan Hannigan, Six Light House Road. Can you just stand up if you don't like that? Yeah, quick question. Uh, past meetings, there was concern about maybe the laterals was a big issue. Did you do any testing in the laterals, video or visual or anything at all in the laterals? So, no new testing was done with the laterals. The laterals were reviewed as part of the CCTV inspections that were previously completed. And it is clear there is clear running water coming in through the laterals. So my understanding is the test they did before, the camera did not actually go up and look at the laterals. Is that correct? So we're just assuming? Correct. The video we reviewed did not have what they call lateral launch okay. inspection. Is that something you'd recommend to, to narrow this down, or is it not worth the effort? Uh, in this case, lateral launch can be, uh, can be relatively expensive from the main line, and the lateral launch is somewhat limited in that in this location, you have a large number of homes that have what they refer to as a chimney connection, which means that pipe comes straight off of the pipe, turns 90 degrees, and then travels horizontally over to the building. Uh, the lateral launch, uh, while they're coming up with new things every day, lateral launch typically doesn't do well trying to get around right angle corners. So, in theory, so you would be limited in what you could see. So in theory, this still could be a major problem, you just don't know at this point, is that correct? Correct. I, I think we I think we would concede that the laterals are a contributing factor. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah. George Simmons, Rebecca Road. Can you stand up, George? Sure. George Simmons, Rebecca Road. For the Rebecca Lane, where it's one PPT, what can I infer from that if Lighthouse Road is 15 to 13 times that? Is that telling me that there aren't leaks in the sewer line based on that uh, data point? I would say it's telling me that what is coming in, at least at that location, is generally, or at the time these samples were taken, is not tidal. It was not tidal. So I can't say that there's not leaks. I can tell you that it was not a that at that location, at that sample, at that time, it would appear that from that percentage, it was not, it was not nearly as much tidal water coming in. So our seawater, our, as it. right. So our concern has been that that sewer pipe is being inundated. We've been told by seawater. That's what we. That's what we've been told, and that's a big problem, and we need to fix it. But it looks like that one data point doesn't support that theory, if I'm correct. Could you um, comment on that, please? Well, I think from, I mean, we're not going to harass it. I'm not, I'm no, asking. No, no, I'm just saying, we, he knows, right, there's 1% on the Rebecca Road side. Pretty good. Right, right, which seems pretty good. Yeah. And the other side is very, very high. So I think that's all we can get from what that information is. Um, so, yeah, I mean, more just brings up a good point, groundwater. Could be more groundwater on the other side. That, that's why I asked the question about the groundwater. If it's, if it's groundwater and it's clean groundwater, that won't tell you that. You know, that right. You have to Correct. learn the rest of the water. Okay, so um, I'm going to let people. you go on. You know, before you go on with your things, can you give me a, a one minute summary of what you think the condition of the sewer pipes on that peninsula is? In the best of your I, mean, I can give you a summary of what we saw in the testing and what we saw and what we reviewed along with this information that we received from CDM Smith. Okay. Which is uh, the pipe is in, uh, I would say, the lined areas are in uh, fair condition. 
However, like to my earlier point, uh, any penetrations in the liner, uh, every which is every service connection, there was there, there typically I think what we saw there were, and what we saw in the field, mind you, uh, there was water coming in from behind the liner into the main line pipe. Uh, from looking at the CCTV inspection uh, that, while didn't go up the laterals, looked at the laterals, there were typically, uh, there were a number of leaks, uh, some severe, seen in those laterals. Uh, I, I apologize, I can't remember off the top of my head how much of that pipe was unlined and just play. I can tell you that a number of locations of that line pipe uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, what they refer to as sag, uh, where the, the pipe has now become misaligned, uh, lining, which lining will not resolve. Uh, it basically just leaves a belly in the pipe. Uh, so I, I would say- it needs to be replaced? I would say based on the information shown in the CDM report, uh, strictly the tidal influence and the and the, the, the number of the peaking factor, which we call it, of extraneous flow to base surface flow. Uh, I think uh, full replacement. Uh, let me preface it in a system that hadn't already been lined. I think lining would have been, would have been a reasonable uh, option in a system that's already been lined with laterals that have limited capability to be lined, I would say full replacement is a uh, is probably the proper way. Okay. Yeah? Uh, Will, do you have any sense roughly about how much was lined? Do you know? Uh, I don't have a good sense of the previous lining projects. Unfortunately, they predate my employment with the town. Um, I do know that this area has been studied multiple times. There are archives in my office of various reports, various mining projects. Um, some of the selectmen may be aware that <coughs> these projects have not delivered on the promises that were made, the mining projects in particular, uh, after the lining has been installed. Shortly thereafter, there have been failures and flows have increased uh, pretty dramatically. Uh, currently, our flows are at record all-time highs and our plant is being crippled by capacity uh, because of defects in the system like this. Thank you. Thank you. You'll be the last question. Uh, Just your name, stand up, and your address. Okay. Nicole Hendrick, I'm at 65 Valley House Road. I'm just, uh, uh, or I would like to understand better, why are we basing our recommendations on a system that's already antiquated? Like if it has a life of 50 years and it's failing, is that not to be expected? I guess that's all. Um, if we're looking at smoke tests and what's leaking and whether it's been lined, like isn't it time to replace it in the first place? Like I don't know if that's the failing of the point or the area or, or the water people. Like I guess it's the recommendation whether the point can support a gravity system or just whether it needs a new system. That's um. what I would say those, those concerns are an accurate summary of the, the town engineering point of view, uh, that this system has gone beyond its useful point of life, um, and the defects are so severe uh, that it needs to be addressed um, before uh, a real hazard or a real crisis happens in this area. Um, it is standard. Uh, once, once things exceed their useful life, they should either be substantially repaired and rehabilitated or replaced. Uh, the same is true for all the pumps throughout the wastewater plants and all the other equipment that the DPW operates and maintains. Uh, when that equipment reaches the end, it's time to replace it. And usually when we replace things, we get to enjoy the benefits of newly designed systems. They come with all sorts of new efficiencies, uh, reduce wear and tear costs, reduce operation costs. Uh, and we're very much looking forward to trying to uh, capture some of those benefits. Great. Okay, so if you want to get to your alternatives, that's great, and I think you can probably skip one. <laughs> Sir, uh, I, well, the only thing I would point out to one is uh, number one is do nothing. One, one is do nothing. Um, so we, we leave it as it is right now. Uh, right now, 
just based on the, the base infiltration that was observed over the period of the CDM Smith monitoring, along with uh, some information from the sewer department on uh, budgets and expenditures uh, for the, uh, I believe last year's fiscal year, uh, your costs versus the amount of flow treated. This area is looking at roughly the town paying $171,000 a year to treat extraneous flow. I will say that that number is low because that is simply based on a fairly small snapshot of, of time. Uh, so okay, move on from that. Uh, alternative two uh, was the low pressure sewer. Uh, honestly, the town has, uh, there, there's been a bid. Uh, you know what that number is going to be, it's roughly $3.3 million. Uh, with low pressure sewer, you're typically looking at uh, a seamless, uh, thermally fused pipe that has no joints. Therefore, you have no place for water to infiltrate into the pipe. Uh, uh, years of service out of a low pressure system is typically going to be, again, 50 years plus for the pipe, uh, 20 years on the pump. Um, the next uh, alternative was, uh, we were asked to look at, was uh, if a new gravity system was installed, replacing the system that is currently out there, which is rough, ranges roughly from about six feet deep to almost up to 20 feet deep as you get up toward Jericho. Uh, and what we did when we looked at that was we had our estimators review that as if they were building that system new and they came back with a number of about four hundred, uh, about four million six hundred seventy-five thousand uh, dollars. I will preface that with that's really material costs, and uh, assuming a lot of things go very well. In this case, you're going to be looking at being uh, you know, installing pipe well below the low tide level, uh, which means you're looking at a very difficult installation uh, that's probably going to require uh, a sheet pile cutoff walls along each side of the trench, uh, along with a uh, probably very sophisticated dewatering system. And what we received back from some contractors we also spoke to was you know, there was some serious concern as to whether they could get a system that could keep up uh, with a tidal flow. Uh, we have seen that working just in some of the neighboring communities uh, where we've had significant effort with our contractors trying to maintain groundwater flows in tidal areas. Uh, what this number does not represent is what a contractor may say is his risk, but that's not a number I can quantify. Uh, the final alternative was there was a suggestion uh, that a, a new gravity sewer could be installed at a shallower depth. Uh, so what we did was looked at that. Uh, typically about midway through Cedar Point, there's a relative low point, uh, and that low point is about a foot lower than everything else. So it's not pronounced. And it's actually a little bit uh, more pronounced on Lighthouse as opposed to Rebecca. Uh, but what we did was looked at basically starting a sewer pipe on either side of that low point, uh, the southern half of the point would go out to the lighthouse to a municipal pump station. Uh, the northern half would go up to the existing connection. What we found was in or, uh, using the current design standards and knowing that there's uh, a new water main out there and what the separation needs to be between water and sewer, we found that just on the start, we did not save that much depth. We really couldn't shallow it without service connection laterals interfering with the water system or being blocked by the water system. Therefore, we had to push deeper to start. Uh, the other issue with, we ran into is now by working our way out from the low point, we were going deeper in each direction as opposed to starting out for the, the lighthouse and working our way back where we could take advantage of the natural topography and keep the pipes a little bit shallower. Uh, the, the other major challenge with the with alternative four is the municipal pump station at the lighthouse. You are looking at a, a, you know, what could be done as a, a low-grade pump station, 
Uh, however, uh, design, you know, best management, design practices are going to tell us that we need to have our electrical controls and a backup generator located at least three feet above the high water mark. Uh, out there, my understanding is that's about six feet off the ground. So we're looking at a generator mounted on the platform um, with a total height probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 to 15 feet. So I'm going to have you stop there for one second because uh, we have to, right now at 720, we have scheduled a public hearing for um, Oro's restaurant for a change of location. So we're going to do that right now and then we'll get back to this whenever that's done. So um, if Robin, if you want to come up and whoever else is, is with you, maybe we can just pull a couple of chairs. Thank you. Maybe you can just drag those two chairs. Just right there. Right there. Hey, this is not a bad launch. <laughs> oh, is it just you, Robin? It's just me. Okay, yeah. Just, 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 just pull a chair over. Okay. Uh, Robin King, 38, round two late. But before we get started, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. I don't even know if that works. I'll speak up. I'll speak up. Just so you know if you can. Have a seat, though. Relax. Seems sort of freaking out a little bit. Sorry. We're really glad to see you. Yeah, I am uh, very glad to see all of you. Myself, I'm doing very well. Thank you. Good. Uh, so I guess uh, if I could, just you know, before we start, um, just about the way to get some things. It's been about two months now. And briefly before we get to it, I just really want to just recognize what an amazing time we live in. You know, um, it was absolutely crazy this year. I can't even really put it into words, but uh, Chief Stewart, Chief Murphy, first responders, police, communities, and our state. So, um, you know, we all have problems to work through, but when it really comes down to it, it's an unbelievable, unbelievable. Thank you. I'm getting there. Uh, change of location. So we would like to move uh, Oro from its current location to uh, 227 Chief Justice Bishop Highway, from the PJ Southern Harvest. Uh, change of location is we've been at Oro now for 10 years. And it's been absolutely amazing. Uh, and we're in a really fortunate situation where um, we're looking for growth. Uh, you know, we have a really, really solid year-round clientele. You know, I mean, I think it's one thing to be really busy during the imperative days and all the rest of it, and that's great. We love that. But I mean, it's, you know, the bread and butter is January, February, and March, and those are the things. We're so, so fortunate to have such a good bottom of it. All the surrounding towns is really special, you know. Um, but from a business standpoint, one of the things that we're really running into is that um, when we have the opportunity to do something else like a buyout or a function or a wedding or a dinner party or something like that, we're really sort of limited on what we can do. We've tried to expand the building itself and that just doesn't really seem like it's going to be an option um, with the parking restrictions and everything like that. And that's okay. Um, but, you know, I think uh, speaking for myself and family my business, uh, it was one of those things where, I mean, she said to me that a million times. I had lived very, very close to it. Um, and uh, the more uh, investigating that we did, it just really seemed like a perfect fit because, you know, we don't want to move. We don't want to leave the We love it. You know? um, so when the opportunity presented itself to do what we've been doing and just really move right down the road, I mean, we just had to jump out. We're really excited about it. It's a very positive thing. Um, I know that we're going for the entertainment and Cohen Big Two um, reasoning behind the areas. You know, I'm really, really um, going to push the private dining, the, the function of it, uh, whatever, whatever it may be. I just think having that uh, extra room will really add a lot to it. We have us in the space, we have the parking, everything's right there. So, um, from a business standpoint, it makes plenty of sense. 
from a personal standpoint, I'm excited about it. Uh, and from the standpoint of being able to keep everything under the same umbrella right here, I think it's a pretty great opportunity. So, uh, that's my reason for it. So if I can just, so you have a, a lease all set up with them yes. and you're ready to move in what sort of time period? Uh, best case scenario for us would be I'd like to keep doing business at Oro Front Street location to the end of September. Um, at that point, change the location from A to B from 162 Front Street to 227 Chief Justice Mission Highway, effective October 1st, and at that point, I'd like to put the two I will do the two weeks. Any questions from the board? How many other seats will you be adding? Mm -hmm. I, I missed the right now, uh, or adding. So right now, um, at our current location, the occupancy is 68. Uh, sort of depends on how you can configure standing up, sitting down. But you're looking at about 200 seats. Are you ready for that growth? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. 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 I'm worried that people are going to move out of the harbor. Yeah. <laughs> that would be my comment. So, <laughs> You know, it's it's been an amazing location down there, and it's it's not a decision that we come to lightly because I mean that's home. I mean that's we spend more time here than we do at our house. Um, but it's business, you know, and it's for an opportunity you know, to get some like uh, just for the time of the whole thing. You know, I mean, it's just really it just it just feels right. You know. But that is a great place. Mm -hmm. Any questions for you? No. All right. Any uh, comments from the audience? Yes, ma'am? Uh, Jennifer Tibbetts, 179 Judge Cushing Road. And um, I, too, have young children. So I'm just curious what sort of outside entertainment you're looking to do and hours of operation of the sure. music. So uh, out of the gate, the music's just really going to pertain to inside. The idea is to have a permanent, sorry, I'm on back to the <laughs> So, so to have it permanent. So if we do some type of reception, wedding reception, we can have it inside. Um, it's not going to be like having a levitate festival down the road. <laughs> so I, I have three small children as well, so I, I hear you. But um, uh, I think just the opportunity to have a little bit of both. So if you an idea on the weekend, if you come in, there can be some live music in the bar. Um, but if you're looking to do a wedding rehearsal dinner or a function, something like that, and you want to have a DJ or a live music or something like that, we'll be able to, we'll be able to accommodate that as well. Okay, just checking because in the past, PJ's had some outdoor music, and there was a couple of sirens where we could hear it from <coughs> our house. Okay. So just curious if there'd ever be outside stuff that we can honor some sort of like... I mean, I, I would... It's not my, it's not our intention mm -hmm. to have exclusive outdoor music. If someone's getting married and the reception is there and they'd like to have a guitarist outside, right. I would say yes because I want to make them as happy as possible. Right. But I'm certainly not looking, once again, to have a... Outdoor function. No, it's not going to be like, you know, the guy with the car. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Great. So the first uh, motion that we're going to make is just to approve the change of location. So we're going to motion that. Move this board of selectmen to approve a change of location for restaurant Oral LLC annual oh, I'm wrong one, sorry. Okay. All alcohol restaurant license from 162 Front Street to 227 Chief Justice Cushing Highway Situate Mass, effective October 1st, 2019. Second. Second by Ms. Bottom. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. It is unanimous. Okay, now we'll move along and talk about the Highway Citrus Mass pending final Board of Health approval effective October 1st, 2019. Second. Second by Ms. Kern. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, next part is the entertainment license. Anyone have any questions on the entertainment license? So, uh, I have a comment. Um, Robin, you know, what are your feelings if we do restrict it just to the doors? <coughs> we're to be getting a lot more restaurants wanting to have outdoor entertainment close, closer to 
Um, I mean, you could get an outdoor one. You just have to come before us. Yeah, get them first. the goal, the, the goal is just to be able to not be restricted when I am speaking with people who you know want to have a function there, mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, we're we're doing this to have a full service restaurant, not to have a, a you know, seven night a week music venue, so to speak. So, um, will there be music in, inside? You know, yes, absolutely. Um, but going late, late, no. I, I think what we're concerned about outdoor. I think the question is we give you an indoor license, but for outdoor events you'd have to come before us and give the the public the chance to come in and hear it and give a discussion about it as well for those wedding events and sure. So you say so, so hey, I have a wedding for this month. Right. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean what happens go ahead. You don't have an outdoor patio anyway, do you? Mm -hmm. No. In fact it's long, so I mean yeah. no, it's not ready to do it outdoors for the yeah. Well, all right. Uh, no. there, yeah, there, I mean, I, can, I mean, I've heard some sort of uh, requests over the years, so you never know. Someone could say, hey, I want a 10 half the parking lot and have a five, you know. I, so at that point, I'd say, you know what, this is what we can do. We can't have the motion here. We can't do music inside. But if that's something that you would like to do, I have to you know, go through the proper steps and then that point. So I like your idea. I would say let's give them a full-time indoor one, and then the outdoor stuff. You just when the, when the events pop up, you just come and talk to us. Absolutely. Mr. Chair, um, the time is it? Do we typically have the entertainment for the hours of operation? Do we? Yes, I I provide each of you a copy of what's typically done in course, town in your packet. Thank you. And this is standard with every other restaurant in the community. Okay. So just so the audience knows, they're requesting a 12 p.m. to 1 a.m. license, um, 10 a.m. on Saturdays and Sundays for brunch, I imagine. So uh, until 1 a.m., I guess, is the, the question. And we have a list of all the other ones. So Jamie, the other one has the annual award. All of them are the Oro. Or, oh, no, that's, I'm sorry, that's a little late. Um, yeah, that's a good system. The West Coast is there now. Yeah. Great. Are they 12? Yeah, we'll look down under a book of harvest. Yeah, so it's but all the others are 12. The voyage is 12. No is 12. <coughs> That's what he's asking. Jamie, he's asking That's for one. 12 to 1 a.m. I think it's operational hours, too. Right? Well, are you okay, okay with good thing for that one? Yes. Yeah, I was <coughs> Are you looking at the liquor or the entertainment? This is for the entertainment. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 A.M. and Saturday and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 12 a.m. Effective October 1st, 2018. So that's an entertaining license. Second by Mr. Harris for the discussion. Anyone from the audience? No. Nope. Anyone on the board? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. All right. Be well. Good luck. Good luck. Very good. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you got a you got a quick break. <laughs> uh, now we'll get back to the sewer uh, sewer project. Versus whether it's a shallower or a deeper segmental pipe uh, with gaskets. 
Uh, either way, you're looking at a you're, you're going to be looking at a vast improvement in the short term in your extraneous flow. Um, however, uh, with all segmental pipe uh, joints will start to dry out. Uh, rubber gaskets will degrade, and at some point in the future, you are there is the potential that you will have to do rehabilitation in that pipe. Uh, again, so that's my the I removed comment of some early on and may return over the years. Uh, similar to uh, the, the, the others, you're looking at a 50 year service life uh, plus on pipe and at a municipal station, you're looking at a 20 year <coughs> life on that station before you're looking at probably a pretty significant rehabilitation um, the of the pump station, the municipal pump station in alternative form. And that would be, I'll, I'll defer to your, your, your sewer department on what your other stations look like as far as uh, the time that they typically have to be rehabilitated. Uh, I'm going to skip over the, the next two uh, photos. I'm happy to answer questions about them, but uh, I'd like to just go to the final recommendation. Could, could I just ask one quick question? Yes, ma'am. Um, but your experience with the low pressure systems, as you say, the other ones will need rehabbing, is that not typical in the low pressure system? I mean, I'm sure there's maintenance, but there, I mean, all of them have a 50 year service life, the, the pipe but we're is saying good. maintenance has to happen on, on just two, three, and four. And no, I'm sorry. So, so to be clear about that, I, I want to be clear on that. There is on the there is a potential on alternative three and four um, in the piping system because it is segmental that there may need to be some uh, what they refer to as joint test and seal, which typically in older segmental systems, uh, as joints tend to fail, you go out and there's a procedure that you follow to to repair them. And that gives it its 50 year life. And that's, uh, it, we would hope that you would get 50 years out without that. Without that, okay. Without that. But I, I can make you, the only time I can guarantee that is if I don't have joints. Okay. And that is alternative too. So you're not really looking at any potential pipe rehabilitation potential in, in alternative two, mm -hmm. but you are looking, it is a pump system. So you are looking at, I, I believe, and I, I, I can make a request of, uh, the representatives from E1, who are pump vendors, uh, but their published information is potentially typically about a service call uh, on a on a system that handles domestic sewage without uh, non dispersibles, wipes, uh, foreign objects, grit, sand. I can go on. Um, they're looking at a service call between eight and ten years. Uh, so someone coming out, pulling that pump, maybe making some changes to it, putting it back in the hole, starting it up again. Um, and uh, typically a service life for that pump. So a rebuild or replacement at 15 to 20 years. Okay, thank you. Right. So if you want to get to your final slide. Sure, I'm gonna go back to the road here. I just want to make it clear that Wooded and Curran was asked to do an independent peer review of the Cedar Point uh, project. Wooded and Curran hasn't had anything to do with previous sewer work in that area. We were not part of any type of design that was done. We were not part of the bidding that went on. We were asked to come in to look at the existing information see if it re, um, required any additional testing, which in our mind, we wanted to spend the town's money very um, fiscally responsible to look at some additional testing, which we did with the smoke testing and the salinity testing, to come up with, if this was a brand new project handed to Wood and Current, and this is something that's in our wheelhouse, we do this type of work all the time, what would we recommend? And based on the information that exists, based on the additional testing, our recommendation would be to replace the existing gravity sewer with a low pressure sewer. It's for a number of reasons. Um, and that's, we put that on page 15. It's environmentally responsible. Low pressure sewer is a seamless pipe. You know, you're not dealing with the cracks. If there was um, some sort of catastrophic event out there, 
where pipes were damaged. This is a single, there's no seams. It is, it will reduce the infiltration and inflow and at the lowest point is going to save $171,000 in money that you're spending to treat, collect and treat clean water. So I just wanted to be able to explain that our staff, Jason had headed up the technical team, we looked at this with clear vision. What would we do if this project was handed to us? Um, and our recommendation would be to replace it with the low pressure sewer. Yeah, so before we get to the questions, if you could just comment on this before because it's going to be, so it's an area that loses power a lot and there's a pump associated with it. So how do you respond to that before we, before we open up there? Sure. Um, uh, certainly that's understandable. That was uh, made clear to us that there is, there are power issues out there, obviously, they're very exposed. Uh, the, the pumps, e each pump is equipped <coughs> with a generator plug, uh, so it can be plugged into a generator and powered. Uh, I believe it's a fairly small generator, uh, so that does give a homeowner the opportunity to, to use a generator either themselves or uh, have service come out in, in and connect the generator to it. Um, the other portion of that is obviously if power is out. Uh, I know it's somewhat of an unpopular statement, but uh, when my power is out, I generally don't use a lot of water. Uh, I'm trying to make sure that I'm not filling my basin. I'm not putting water into that pump. Uh, these, <clears throat> the basins are sized to have some storage so that you don't have to use no water. Uh, but, but generally what they're looking to do, uh, the folks who, who produce these will tell you that they're, they're, they're set up to be run off a generator or to, to basically sit for a short period of time. Um, I'll first open to the board and then we'll go from there. Who wants to start? I had uh, two questions. Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll go. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot because people are asked um, to get a second opinion. And I know this may be uh, professionally disrespectful, but what is your opinion of CDM and their reputation in the industry with regards to recommending what they have and what you review? And I do that only because you know you did a peer review, so I, I want folks to understand what the caliber of the initial analysis was. I think CDM, as well as Wesson and Sampson, because Wesson and Sampson was involved at some level too, are highly professional, respectable, respectable firms. Um, I would say that Wooded and Curran is probably in the same size and the same caliber. But um, when you go in to look at a peer review, it's almost not even looking at who did it. It's looking at what is the data and what was done versus looking at the firm. But it's a highly respectable firm. Uh, and let me just add, uh, again, we went in, we went in and looked at the data. Uh, you know, I've, I've done a fair amount of SSES in my career and in poor infiltration studies. What they, what they provided you was uh, on par with what I would typically expect and in line with the guidance provided by MassDEP for the guidelines for II studies and, and SSEM studies. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my second question was, how often do you recommend that the low pressure system like this um, be replaced? Because it's not something that Um, it's in coastal uh, communities where you're in the velocity zone and you're typically under the jurisdiction of the coastal zone management, a low pressure system tends to be the preferred system because of um, not only 
environmentally sound where you've got uh, one piece piping, you don't have all of the seams. Um, I did a considerable <coughs> amount of planning in the town of Nantucket, and most of the areas that are right on the water are were recommended in a comprehensive wastewater management plan for low pressure sewer uh, are in the process of being implemented. Um, you've got a community that abuts you that's a coastal community that has a significant amount of low pressure sewer. Um, it, I think the environmental agencies as well as the regulatory agencies, given the geographic location and the coastal influence would recommend a low pressure sewer. Answer my question. Do, do we have any sort of a similar system? <coughs> yeah, I okay, so, so we have experience in mind with this type of system. There's, is there another one? Is there well, shape ponds. Yeah, yeah, there are uh, several E1 uh, low pressure force systems throughout town. Uh, right. Yep, yeah, this building itself uh, has an E1 pump. Um, there are areas uh, like Cushing School that are run on E1 pumps. Uh, and then the squash pit area is largely all E1 pumps. Um, and then we have a number of E1 pumps throughout town uh, for homeowners that have experienced emergency septic system failures. Uh, they tend to prefer connecting with the E1 pump in order to overcome challenges and get into the connection point. And just one other question, have there been any bad experiences, like things have gone really wrong? Uh, for the most part, we haven't had any horror stories or uh, uh, major complaints about the E1 pumps. Uh, typically, I would experience about four to six calls about the E1 pump in a year. And usually they're calling wondering why the light on the box went off. Uh, typically, phone calls like this occur around uh, a thunderstorm event. So if they had a power fluctuation, it could have tripped the breaker. Um, and typically, try to explain over the phone, but more often than not, we immediately send out an operator. Uh, they go to the homeowner, they explain how the box operates, how to reset the breakers, um, and what all the features inside the box and how they activate. Nine times out of ten, it resets right away. Uh, every now and then, we have to go into the house and reset the house breaker and get something running. Um, if these things are maintained, they do last for a long while, um, and that's, that's the trick. Thank you. Karen? Well, I just really have more of a comment. I think that the data is the data, and um, we were tasked with uh, making sure that we were really comfortable with that data and its recommendation, and I feel that we are at that point. Um, we, I don't think there's anyone in this room that doesn't agree that the system is, needs to be replaced, and um, so I thank you for giving us that additional information so that we can base our decision on that. I'm, I'm interested to, to hear the questions of the residents that, you know, hopefully um, they've answered a lot of the concerns we had at the last meeting, but I'm sure there'll be a couple more. I've heard it six times. A seamless pipe on a low pressure system. Could you describe what that looks like? Yes, sir. I think we were supposed to bring a piece of it. Oh, my God. So is it a roll? It is. Uh, it depends on the size. Um, typically, the low pressure system, and if you go to page 14, there's a photo of it. But typically, the coming out of the pump, you, end up, you have a uh, with a high density polyethylene pipe at an inch and a quarter. Uh, that can be, can be on a roll or can be in, in sticks. Uh, what they do is they take this plastic pipe, uh, and in this case, uh, I believe the, the design was for between one and a quarter inch, or one and a half inch, and four inches. Uh, it's a solid wall plastic pipe. It's heated and uh, literally pressed together. And when it cools, it, it no, there's no longer a joint. And that joint is stronger than the pipe around it. So it's effectively well. Um, so that, that is the seamless pipe. Uh, page 14. Uh, page 14. We don't have a question. Can you put it up behind you? I can, sir. With this picture right here. Oh, you got to go to 14. You didn't go ahead. 
We got that. Yeah. <laughs> and if I can add to that, the tricky part is you 
people are still living there where that's going on, so you have to keep the sewer active going there, either with bypass pumping or different means. So that's just one one thought for that. Can I just say one other yeah, thing? Yeah, keep going. And the other thing, like to, to Karen's neighborhood and Ralph Crossland's neighborhood down on the Stone Avenue, those of you who might remember him, they didn't have anything. This cabin didn't have anything, so it, you know, these people had a gravity system, did not have to rely on this, <coughs> and it worked for a number of years. And it was just, who knows who was watching the construction or installation of that pipe. And I'm not saying, just things have changed, and technology has changed. That's, then I'll show you. Um, you know, just to clarify, so I understand in doing the project that you described, going down and putting the plates in, it would be difficult to do it because of the tides. But then when all said and done, you've got a pipe that is has seams that is below the seawater level, right? So in 20, 30, 40 years, we're gonna have the same problem we have right now. You may have a problem similar. I can't say for pipe. certain that you would. No, we would have, have a pipe below <laughs> sea level that could have cracks in it, it's going to be, have seams that could be breaking and seawater could be going in. You would have a gasketed segmental pipe below what time? <coughs> um, so before we open it up, I just want to have a quick summary of, so we got here because uh, Kevin and, and our water department, our sewer department got together and looked into all this stuff, spoke to their consultants, spoke to their experts, and came back with this type of system as a recommendation. And then went out and got a, a bid on getting the work done. We then met in April. The citizens had questions on it. We said they sound reasonable. We hired these consultants to come in, look at the stuff, do the smoke testing. I think that's really what we focused on in that meeting. Uh, obviously did the saline testing as well. And you've come back and you've recommended the same thing that the people prior recommended as well. Um, we all talked about it and, and just spoke with Sits as well about what the condition is. I mean, clearly there's a condition. Uh, the big issue that I see is the electrical core of the pumps, right? You lose power, you lose a pump, and all of a sudden you've got an issue with, with your sewage. Um, so, so I think that's where we are right now. Um, and I'll open it up to you, to you guys, and we'll have, have questions and answers here. Let's try not to be redundant. Let's try not run on too much, um, but ask your questions to them, and then, and then make whatever points you have to ask people. So, uh, Mr. Ball. Thanks, Tony. I, I just want to say that... Just did your name and I'm sorry, no. <laughs> David Ball, for a little seat of one associate, 44, back in a row. I want to <coughs> apologize for my membership, because we sent out an email about this meeting tonight, last night, just about this time. And the reason for that was we didn't know really what this meeting was going to be about tonight. If you take a look at the agenda, first item, it says 6.30, meeting call to water, and then 6.30, first item, <coughs> Cedar Point Project Review. If it says Cedar Point Sewer Project Review, we wouldn't know. I mean, we suspected that that's what it was about. And, and thankfully, Lorraine Devon sent me the, the uh, email so that we at least started thinking about it. Uh, so, Michelle Lorraine started kind of poking around a little bit to see what was going on. I did. I wasn't able to meet with anybody really. Fortunately, I was able to talk to Will yesterday, or, yeah, yesterday afternoon, and he gave me kind of a quick rundown on the, on the board. Um, all the areas that we're going to be talking about. So we have only had 24 hours to talk about this. Frankly, if we had been able to put the email out two or three days before that, we would have twice as many people in this room. So I just want to mention that. This morning I had a call from Representative Patrick Kern, very concerned for the same reasons that I'm expressing to you uh, about the lack of time that the neighborhood had to think about this. He was really concerned because obviously he lives on, on Lighthouse Road, he and his family. 
of whom the defective, just like everybody else. His comment to me was, at the end of the conversation, you, you being me, call me tomorrow morning, first thing, which I will do. But uh, he just expressed the same frustrations that we talked about this before. Yeah, I'm going to stop for one second and just say, we, we don't even know if we're going to vote this tonight. We're, we're hearing about it. We may vote it. We may not vote it. But let's get to the questions on the system, and then we'll figure out if we're ready to, to take that step. I just want to get this part yeah. of it, you know, okay. yeah. Nothing was done to, to misinform or, or to try and... No, I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's a lack of, a lack of full time. Okay. So let's get on with the... Okay. So my last comment is, I would certainly hope that no vote is taken tonight. These people haven't even had time to digest what you're, what you're proposing. So I was pleased that Kevin, uh, and Kevin did tell me back in, I guess, June, that he was thinking of, of hiring, uh, what are the current, I think they did a good job of what the, what they, the information that they did have. That's my so that's you, point. Dave, you don't have any questions on the systems or what, I, what I'm they're? Gonna, I'm gonna let other people do that. <coughs> Okay. Yes, sir. Corey Conrad, 1144, Road. Just so I understand it clearly, each one of the systems that you're proposing has a 50-year lifespan. No. And each one on the pump has a 20-year proposed lifespan. So there's no difference in between the systems. The pipe. At least that's what the chart said. That you so what is it? The other one was a lifetime. The one in the pump was 20 years later. was a lifetime. Actually, I'm not sure if I the piping of both systems both have a 50 year life. Pipe, piping is typically designed for a 50 year life. So whether it's a low pressure or gravity, it's a roughly a 50 year life. So we're looking at the exact same lifespan and we're looking at the same investment essentially. No matter what pipe we use and what system we use. Life, life expectancy. Life expectancy. We're looking at the same pipe. Life expectancy, yes. So in 50 years, no matter what, that pipe should fail or could fail. And in 20 years, the pump could fail. Correct. On both systems. Yes. Okay. I think, can I just interject yeah. one second? That was sort of where I was going on my questions. I think what, what, if I'm understanding correctly, the difference is with the solid pipe, over time, there'll be less problems with it over that 50 years, whereas the ones with seams, you might at 30 start having some of those seams go. So but I think I had that was I was trying to figure that out. Right. You've almost 160 pumps instead of having one right. pump to service. You have 160 pumps to service, or even more than that, or failure points. Right, but so you're relying on electricity too. Drain sewage in an area that loses power. I'll, I'll defer to Will on that one, but the but that you know once those are I mean I have one <laughs> and if mine fail, they come they take the cap off they pull it out they put a new one in. But it's not going to affect this. Yeah. It's not going to we don't have pipes we have to change. So you're right I get that but it's it's a lot of different ones but the cost and the repair is pretty identifiable instead of sticking cameras in. Yeah, I'll, let, I'll defer to the experts on that. Uh, what's the, what was, did you need something else to answer? Nope, nope. Okay. Okay. So your point is both pipe systems are going to last 50 years, yep. but you've got 20 year pumps in all the ones in the low gravity, I mean the low pressure. Okay. Uh, yes, oh, yeah, go ahead. Ma'am, I'll pick you next then. Okay. Um, can we get a breakdown of the estimates of the 3.3 and the 4.675? Um, we see two numbers there. And the detail estimates are the 3.3, including all the pumps for the pump, um, Lighthouse Road and Rebecca, electrical connections, and the stock for the pumps and everything. Why is that not including the 3.3 million? That's included. It's included in the 3.3. Kevin said the pumps are included. In, in the 3.3 million, 3 .3 million yeah. where he's got 20 years for pumps, do you include a replacement after 20 years for a pump in the U.S. Is there two pumps included in that quote? Or no, that's one? a single pump in each location. Single. Good point. Mm -hmm. Very good point. 
Do you know how much a pump is about? How much a bed is about twenty five hundred dollars for a complete rebuild? Today. Is that the pump cost or is a pump install replacement cost? Uh, install Is that new or rebuild? Certainly. <laughs> new replaced in, in in pump and labor. Is twenty five hundred? Correct. And how many do we have there? 200, uh, 150 something? Is that today's cost or the cost 20 years from now? Well, everything's in today's cost, but. Anybody else is on point? Say 120? Is that what we're going to cost? 27, I think. Yeah. But it would be helpful if we got a breakdown of the two estimates, too. I'm sure you have a detailed breakdown. <coughs> yeah, we can, we'll get that at some point. Um, just to clarify, looking at a, a breakdown in the price for each estimate or a breakdown in the impacts for each alternative? A break, the detailed breakdown of the estimates, what's in the estimates, what's not in the assessments. So if I, can, if I can step into that, the $3.3 million is an actual bid that went out to bid. Okay. So that's real dollars right today. The 4.68 was an estimate from um, Woodward and Curran's estimate, construction estimate that came up with that cost. So the extra you know, replacement pump, they just did the math, would be another $317,000 in the future. Maybe that's $400,000 or something. And who's responsible for that? Um, that, I mean, the, how this is going to be paid for really hasn't been discussed yet, whether it's the retirement or whether it's paid. Is that on the homeowner's work to replace in 20 years? That I haven't decided. We haven't decided. Right now it's the homeowner. Yes. <coughs> Ma'am, did you have a question? Well, Susan, I was just thinking as a homeowner, um, whether when the pump goes, who do I call <coughs> the town? And someone will come and do something about it in due course, hopefully not too long. And is it my responsibility to pay for repair or to <coughs> the pump? Yeah, well, thank you. What do we do now? Uh, our, our current policy for handling E1 pumps uh, is if we were serve a service call or a complaint, uh, is we typically try to work with a homeowner. Uh, like I described, we typically send an operator out within the hour uh, to try to troubleshoot what the problem is. Uh, nine times out of ten, the problem is resetting a circuit breaker. Uh, on that one out of ten occurrence, uh, we typically direct them to contact either the drain leader who installed it. Uh, sometimes the drain layers can offer some support for warranty services, uh, the work that they do. Uh, we also recommend that they contact FR Mahoney, which has a service division for these pumps. Uh, we have had good experience with FR Mahoney. They typically respond very quickly and get things up and running again. Um, and that cost would fall upon the homeowner, unfortunately. Okay. So the replacement pump would, is currently now paid by the homeowner? Donald Ferrer, 95 Lighthouse Road. Uh, your final recommendation said that this was the most cost-effective alternative for the town. But as a homeowner, we haven't decided who, the town hasn't decided who's going to pay for this. And one of the last meetings we had, I think Michelle brought up, it was another coastal community, I think it was Chelmsford, was having problems with their pumps. And I think it was like <coughs> 300 or $400,000 that they had to pay because they committed to the homeowners that they would service the pumps. So your information there that that's our maximum amount spent is inaccurate because you're going to be spending if the town is responsible for repairs to the pumps and replacement of those pumps which we haven't decided yet but right now it's on the homeowner that 3.3 is inaccurate it's like the picture you showed of water pouring into a pipe from 2011. i had a full head of hair in 2011. <laughs> i don't know it's just it's not fair to show a picture of water coming into a pipe that's nine years old it's not accurate to say that that's 3.3 million when it's probably going to be four. So let's spend the four six. We're good for 50 years. We're going to be paying for it anyway as taxpayers. So let's just do it once, forget about the pumps, and put the damn sewer line in. That's first. Second is any statistical, st statistical data on salt water infiltration into these pumps. I live underground. I mean, why, why, I'm underwater two, three, four times a year. What happens to the pump when water, salt water specifically gets into it? And who's responsible for it? So we have to factor that cost in. It seems like 
Every other option but option two has, problem, has problems, added costs. But alternative two is 3.3 maximum amount. Everything else has, oh, God, who knows what it's going to be. So please clarify. Well, yeah. uh, just your point, you, you whoever brought up the, the point about the replacement pump, that was a good point that just wasn't included, just wasn't thought of. It. But you're right, another $400,000 or so should go into that, that cost estimate. Yeah, but that thing doesn't include a replacement that you would need to do. And just to reiterate, the reason that the 3-3, as, as um, Mr. Cavity pointed out, has already been bid, and that's what somebody said they would build the system for. But so, it says probably 20 years on it. It, doesn't, it just doesn't include a replacement, yeah, yeah. which makes sense to do. Um, you went, so I'll come back to you in a second, but, uh, okay. sir, you haven't spoken yet, yeah. It just seems to me. Just your name and address. And Jeremy Desmond and 78 Rebecca Road. It seems to me we might have to replace the pumps multiple times in 40 or 50 years with the, with the salt water coming in. Okay. So just one. I, mean, I think one on another thing, if somebody would remind us about, because I have that question where I look at the same thing, the installation, it's in a it's in a thing, right? I mean, it's not just sitting. It, it is in a thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's yeah, but, but what I, what I wanted to do is actually, Rosemary wanted to respond to the other question about jobs. Sure. Okay. In talking yes. about a $3.3 million cost in today's dollars that includes one pump, you have to remember that you're spending a minimum of $171,000 a year now to collect and treat clean water. So if you have to replace a pump every 20 years or so, it's far cheaper than what you're spending now to treat this II. Can you just quickly just talk about the, just remind people about the construction the of, the, well, of the pump pit? It's, it's a pit. That one I'm, I'm kind of excited to, to talk about. Um, we're pretty proud about some of the features we've designed for housing these E1 pumps. Uh, we do recognize a lot of the concerns and challenges of the area, particularly during a storm event. Uh, that's why we designed these pumps to be housed inside of a concrete shelter. Um, the, the shorthand way I've been describing this is that each pump is getting its own bomb shelter. Uh, it's a fully enclosed concrete structure, uh, sealed and lined. Uh, so that no water can infiltrate into the structure. The pump itself has its own tank and is rated for uh, floodplains, so they have experienced inundation with water and have held up to that. And it's going to have the added benefit of being encased entirely in concrete with a uh, bolted down watertight frame and cover to prevent any uh, floodwaters from entering that structure. Uh, this structure will also protect it from any sort of road debris or uh, issues with uh, the velocity of the waters. Uh, it's a very sturdy structure. It's unique. None of our other E1 uh, customers in town are getting this feature, um, and it should hold up uh, very well under the conditions we're going to put it under. And how large is it? Uh, the size of the structure? Yeah. Uh, I'd have to check the design drawings, but I believe it's roughly five feet wide. Four, like, roughly four or five feet wide. Yeah. Large enough to have we done the right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let me call on you and then we'll ask questions to try and keep it. In yeah, that is an important detail. I should, these are sub grade, these are below ground shelters. Um, they, they're not going to obtrude the property or be an eyesore. Does it have a water? Can water come up? Is there a base? It is a full, full structure. I'm going to put this man in the back. Just my opinion. Maybe on your back row, John McCarthy. It seems that the consensus with this wood out in current is everything's gravitating to it that alternative four. I think the consensus for people I've talked to just on the street with things that are happening is to replace what's going on. Alternative one seems to be what I think I would feel what people want to do. Replace whatever's broken down and continue the way it's been done. Instead of all these components and these pumps and salt water and generators that are going to turn into a massive mess. So your opinion is to do nothing. Pardon me? Your opinion is to do nothing? 
and just I think we like alternative one, replace the shorelines the way they should be and that's not get anything else. That's, 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 that's alternative that's three. That's that's three. That's that's three. three. Okay, so he, he's in favor of the gravity. Um, someone over here at the hand up. Yes, sir. Uh, I have a question, Martini Duffy from 62 Rebecca Road, and I'm curious about the capacity of, of this system or what we have now. And number two, um, I think someone else mentioned the, the numbers. Like, like I'd like to see all the, you know, 4.67, like what does that include? And over 20 years, if you did, you know, uh, <coughs> tax, like what would that be every year to, to actually, um, you know, give us a, you know, an improved version of what we have? And I don't know if I'm personally convinced that you've done all of your due diligence to investigate if it could be the laterals or um, you know you took these sporadic readings. I mean, it didn't seem like there was a lot happening on the Becker Road. So, do, you know, this is a major change for us, for taxpayers, for homeowners, for we're invested in this neighborhood. So please, just give us time to learn about these options. Because well, we may want it to go with alternative. Right. Three. So I'm going to answer one. It's abundantly clear that your area of town is a major drain on the sewer system because seawater is getting in. So that's laterals, no laterals, whatever's going on there is making, is has our water, our sewer treatment plant at its capacity and above capacity. So that system needs to be addressed. And we've known it for how long, Kevin? Where Five is, years? Where is it, where, you know, We've had actual numbers now. Not well, you can just look at the saline number right there and know that half the water that we're processing on the lower track of, uh, on the southern track is seawater. That's Lighthouse Road. Well, that's Lighthouse Right, Lighthouse. Right. Road. Right. right, Lighthouse Road. And we know that those pipe systems only last 50 years. That We've all bought into that assumption right now, and that's over 50 years old. So we know the system is, is in need of repair. It's not just going in and putting a band-aid here or there. It's not just fixed. It's whether we're going to fix it with this system or that system. I think we're at that point. Well, let's let's net it out. I mean, let's actually do a apples to apples comparison. It seems like you're sort of well, that's what going on a lot of you know vague. Um, well, I think it's this, and you know, it's a big move for us. And it's it's a sewer system that needs to be replaced, and and that's what they're trying to do here is tell you the pros and cons of what and what they. We've got two experts coming. We lose our power all the time. Right. right? That's that's the one point. One second, sir. Um, somebody, I'm just trying to go in order and let people that haven't spoken first. So go ahead. The Sean Duffy, uh, 62, Rebecca. The 3.3 million, did, when they gave you the bid, was there a contingency <coughs> that could be added costs? That was, you know, they're selling this to us, right? Yep. So they're sales. The right? <laughs> selling this, us. No, to this was the only, um, Kevin, you can explain. So well, is there that, the three point, are there contingencies on top of the cost of replacing the units that could get us close to the 4.675? Because I'm not convinced that you all believe this is environmentally sound. It's really about money, right? It's, it's, not, it's not about money. Okay, it's not. I'll, I'll well, accept you on face value of that, but if I was sitting over there, I'd be thinking about the money. You guys are going to pay for it. Okay. Then so we'll pay for it. Right? Pay for it. Pay for it. The taxpayers, Maybe we need to do our own let me just get the answer to the question from them. Is there a contingency in the bid for additional costs that may come up, may or may not? Overrides. Overrides contingencies. Yes so, or no? Change orders. That's all. This, in any contract, there's always a potential for change. Of course there are. Okay. Could it possibly have, get up to 4.6? Sure, sure. <coughs> the 4.6 one has it too, so could that get up to 5.8? Yes. All right. The four point four, four six is an estimate. Three point three is right. a bit. Just numbers that were right. Yeah. But there is a contingency. Well, there's. Let me, I, if, I, if I can clarify that, yeah. um, we had a set of documents and the set of specifications. The specifications book is about this thick with all the rules, regulations, and what they can and what they can't use. Uh, Weston and Samson put it together. We've had good luck with them in the past. There's always the opportunity for a change order. They could dig up a boat or God knows what. We don't know. Um, but, you know, I, yeah, there's always a chance either job. The 3.3 .3 is a hard number. The 4.68 is, is a loose number. They went to 15 other jobs and probably said, we're going 20 feet deep. How much does it cost per foot? And then they added 20%. You know, 
to water. They didn't feed it and construct it like it's, like it's a fin. The fish could come in different. The fish could come in at eight, could come in at 3.3. We don't know. But the town is doing uh, option three, correct? And it would be the uh, contractor that's going to The town hasn't agreed to do anything. It's, it's discussion phase now, and we're hearing from Woodward and Curran to get their opinion on the period. That's, that's all that's happening, to, to my knowledge. Would it be reasonable to get an actual bid so that we could hold things up maybe a little longer? Get an actual bid for real, get a real number as to compare apples to apples for all alternative three, so that we, the town and, and everyone can be yeah. sure. You need a it, well, first of all, it costs money to get, you know, to go through that process, and we really are not trying to delay this much longer. We've got a two point two million dollar grant that's that's in the works right now. Um, you have so, like until another year, though. You have there is uh, time left. There's that's, that's question. Which question? That's something that's question. And we're on ten Hillcrest Road. Um, I've been waiting for sewer for fifty years. Growth in this town, whether we want it, want it or not, is happening. Our sewer treatment plant is overextended, totally overextended. There was a contract ready, ready to be awarded at the last meeting, and it was decided because of Cedar Point to put it off and have another look at it. The bottom line is the $2.2 million grant will pay for, uh, not, it won't pay for all of it, and it is my understanding that you all are not going to have any betterments here. This is going to be spread out over the town. Over the town. And your pump is going to be free. I put in a new system if sewer ever comes to me, and it's going to cost me $18,000. It's not going to cost you anything. But it's going to free up the sewage treatment plant so that maybe some other people will be able to tie into it. If this is something that really, truly needs to be done, and I know that it is unpopular, I'm well aware of it, but I would like the people that we have elected to make a decision, popular or otherwise. Thank you. I have another question about the... Ma'am, um, so I'm going to, uh, I see both of you and I'm going to get back to you, but is the man Green has spoken yet? David Moore, 64 Rebecca Road. Um, part of this rant, which Ann just mentioned, when we got ours done, that frees up the sewer space so that they can build up an EMTA parking lot and put that sewer in. Yep. Okay. Um, with this option number two, we have to do maintenance of the pumps. How often and how, uh, how much does that cost? And 20 years for the pump, is that, is that a new number we have now? 20 years? That's what the estimate like for the pump this year. Okay, I just have heard 20 years before that. So I want to know how often I have to have it maintained and what it's going to cost. I think you said to try and get 20, 20 years out. Go ahead. Actually, Mr. Chairman, if it's all right, I'd like to defer to uh, the representative of FR Mahoney. Sure. Sure. Um, if you just say who you are, just so Ken, you Henry Alvaro with FR Mahoney. Um, and you guys installed the pump. Was, we are the New England representatives for Environment One. And we quoted to the contractor who gave the actual price to do this work. Uh, the pumps, even one has always had in their literature an eight to ten year mean time between service calls. Some go longer, some are shorter, depending on what happens. And the life expectancy has always been given you know, in the 20-year range. We've got systems that go well beyond that. We've got systems that if they weren't installed correctly by private installers sometimes fail sooner. Um, this is going to be done under one contractor with a contract inspection and bunker desk, as Will has mentioned. So you're starting out in a much better situation than you know, with private installations. Uh, in Chelmsford, uh, we did a study in Chelmsford, uh, we did a study in Chelmsford, Marion, Palmer, actual service data, and we found that in the New England region, because of steps that we take additionally, the mean time between service calls is closer to 13 some odd years. And this is an appliance, it's a, it's a, it's a core pump that can be pulled out as, as, as we mentioned. Uh, simply opening a cover, unplugging, pulling the unit out, either it's rebuilt or it's replaced. 
so there's no other excavation. So the future ongoing costs are going to be less than digging a deep sewer. But uh, you know, those are the, the advantages that we offer. Uh, we have these systems in flood zones in Florida. We get hurricane inundation, and they're typically quicker to recover than the gravity sources. So uh, we have a lot of experience with these. We're in our 50th year with these systems. We develop this technology. Uh, and I know that there's a lot of fear. And all I can do is try to allay that fear that we have a very good track record, very good experience, and we have very good reliability. We've got a lot of data to show. How often do they have to be maintained? And how much does it cost? <laughs> he, said, he said every 13 years is what he finds. Yeah. No, no, that's a service call to replace or have a new plane. If they're maintained, they will last this long. How often do I have to have it maintained? There is no main, there is no ongoing schedule maintenance. No schedule maintenance. It's not like taking your truck in and getting the oil change. Okay. So and then the average service call might be in the eight to nine hundred dollar range. Uh, for a repair on site, we try to repair on site. Uh, we have loaners, so if we can't repair a pump on site, we drop in a loaner. There's no charge for the loaner. We take the pumps back to our shop and we can do repairs. So if it's an emergency situation in the middle of the night, we can drop, we drop in the spare, you're back in service, and we can do a repair and bring the pump back. It's just earlier in the evening I heard that if they were probably maintained, so that's what I was about. Right. They're not abused. These are not trash cans. So, you know, the flushable wipes. Your pump station, your sewer system, the gravity, or be it our system, those don't go down the drain. Those go in the trash. So things like abuse are, I think, probably what Yeah, but you're going to create a little bit of abuse. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry, I was trying to hear a clarification. You said flushing disposable wipes would be considered abuse. Disposable wipes is a lie. Okay. Yeah. Disposable wipes are lie by the industry. Disposable. They're not disposable. They're not flushable. You yeah. don't like them down that system. I, I'm not saying I do that. Right. I'm just <laughs> there's 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 there. the clarification I want to make sure. Problem at the plant. I'm sure. I just yeah. What it In the back, sir. Jay Farrell, with the one thing you can wash on. To leave this point, yes, we understand the system has to be replaced. Yes, we understand that people have to eat soon. The question is, how much are you going to put on the homeowners and which option to take? So, yes, I think we're going to be choosing potentially the right plan. We don't want to be very good on us. And you're right, based on, you know, right now it's written for one. The last meeting we talked about could be changed. I don't know what happened with that. I'm not going to get into that right now. The other thing that happened three months ago in the last meeting, we said, hey, we would like additional testing that was recommended in the report. Report recommended the review, and all yeah. we got was the smoke test. No, we, so, said, <coughs> no, we said we said we never said we were doing video at the last one. We said we were going to do the smoke testing. Is really what we focused on because we thought that that would show, show some results. Um, okay, that wasn't stated to me. Stated to me, yes, we're going to do additional testing, and then we get the meeting. So in my mind, that meant additional we're, testing. We're, so we're not really identify what the problems. Mm -hmm. Now again, you know. Because we can replace the name and we replace the laterals at the same time. Yes. Okay, good. So, uh, you know, again, right. Are we replacing that wasn't clear. The last we also talked about last yeah. meeting how yeah. the name had been sealed and maybe just the laterals had to be done. That, that came up in the last meeting as well. So, well, that's what we said. Since the testing was going to be done, <clears throat> since we brought up multiple issues, the impression that I got was multiple things were going to be tested to validate the last plan, not just look at the video that could go up the laterals or couldn't hit the 90 degree turn or whatever. Okay. My next point is, I understand that the class is not bad the system. All of them are good. Uh, I think the selectman there asked, has one. How high is your house on the ground? And how much water or rocks do you get through your area when that happens? And how often do you lose power? You know? Well, I do lose power a lot. But no, I think that your question, you guys have a unique if I may, I, Mr. Chair. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you guys definitely have a unique situation. You get cobbled, you get all that stuff. I think that's exactly why it was engineered to do the bunker system. And I understand the bunker system, but so, the it's also losing the power. And how much, you know, hey, don't use a lot of water when you lose power. Great. So I don't take a shower. Do I get to do my dishes? Do I get to eat? 
and I'm going to brush my teeth. No one else can. Yeah. Don't flush your toilet. Right. <laughs> okay. I just can't. And I just can't. So here's what I'm going to do. I, I see like four or five people with their hands up. That's we're going to let those people speak, and then we're going to move on. I'm going to start with the man with the paper up towards the Yeah, John Knightley, Rebecca Lowe. What about generators? They talk about, well, you don't, don't need much of a generator to have no cost. I mean, we've got additional costs to get a generator. Who's going to wire it? I, I don't know. It's just, there's a lot of cost factors here that we just assume, well, you do that, you do that, you do this. And, you know. You know I, don't, I don't think they're saying you have to get a generator. I think they're saying that it functions on a generator. Well, yeah, so, if you lose power, how are you gonna, what are you going to do? Well, what are you, you going to do, do if in a gravity one, if you lose power? You're fine. It works. 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 It if I may, it's probably out of the 35 White House Road, that nobody during this whole project has gone to the individual houses to see how hard it is to put these pumps in. I don't have any room around my house. I got just enough room to walk around my house. I've had experience with one in the basement in Cohasset. I got there and was ankle deep in other people's sewage. So I don't want it in my basement. And I know that's an alternative. Is that true? You can have indoor or outdoor. So uh, these are all plan B. There are places in, down there in the lighthouse. Each situation has to be looked at separately to put these pumps in. They, they really do. Yeah, I think that's great. nobody has gone down there and looked at each thing. They just went out to bid. Nobody went down there and looked at each house. They just put it out to bid. That's, that's my statement. Okay. And last statement. Uh, one thing that you all have to consider is I want a septic system, and I have to kind of maintain everything. Every year, it costs me money, and that if it fails, time to five, it will cost me between twenty-five and fifty thousand dollars to replace it. So that's what I'm up against. So if you know, talk about maintenance in twenty years, I'll be dead. So I don't think. Uh. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, Henry A. Six Homes of Island Grove. Uh, I know everybody in that area of I out there, Dr. Lane, to all your concern. And I have a, a pump for my bathroom downstairs, and Tom knows it. And that pump has operated close to 30 years and have had any, haven't had any problems. All I'm saying is the concerns are valid, but the you know, meantime, you see failure mentioned 13 years. It doesn't need names. I don't have names on that pump. Uh, I do have generator in the electricity bill. Uh, but I think, you know, yeah. <coughs> I, I think you're focused on a very narrow point, and you really should consider the kind of situation. Okay, you in the red shirt, then you, and then you, and then we're done. Yep. <laughs> Stephanie Porcioni, um, 74, um, Rebecca Rosen. Uh, I was on that side um, My concern is is the cost to the resident. I'm sorry, I have kids. Um, the paycheck to paycheck. All this added stuff, including, I don't have <coughs> a sewage in the septic system, but we're also going to be paying sewage. Do people with septic systems do not pay sewage? So that brings up a point. Also, your point is there are people that are coming to this town developing who want the sewer line and they have yet to afford you. I I don't want to debate the two. So you and then you and then that's it. Uh, I think we need more information. Uh, the most valuable thing I heard tonight is the salinity data. I'll measure the three mammals. And that one thing we learned from that is there may be no leakage at all on the Rebecca Road side. Uh, maybe there is, maybe there isn't. 
But for about 30 manholes, and if you look at the other 27 pretty fast, we may have a better story. So I'd like to volunteer to work with either one of our consultants or the uh, <coughs> sewer department. Take a look. We can measure rather quickly what the salinity is in the other 27 holes. Because I think we're going to find something surprising. Either we only have to replace half of the sewer system, or maybe just fix the leaks if we can localize them. The clouds didn't work, but I think uh, conductivity will. So my only point to you is, no matter what side of the road you're on, your sewer system is over 50 years old, and that's past the, the impacted life of that sewer system. So if we were to go on right now and say, okay, let's fix half and replace half, we're going to be back at this table within five or 10 years dealing with this yeah. again. Well, I'll be dead by that time. <laughs> 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 We need more information to do something into any of you because even if we're in four, we have to do one of them. Okay, thank you. Right. Yes, ma'am. They're the last comments, so make it good. Okay. First, everybody here knows we've got a 99 problem. We don't have to tell us that. We've heard about it. We know we have it, and we want to fix it. Okay. No problem with fixing it. To the lady back there, we paid sewer assessments when we got our sewer put in the first place. I lived there at that time. A lot of these other people lived there, or their fathers or grandfathers there, we paid the assessment. We paid for the sewer. We'd love to see you get a sewer, but we, like some other gentleman said, we want to make sure we got the right one. We're going to save 170000 on the INI, no matter which system we get. So that's a non-entity. The town asked Weston and Sampson to give them an estimate on how much it costs on the pumps over a period of 20 years, because you were talking about taking over the ownership of the pumps on the point. And Weston and Sampson said, and it's right here in their report, that the approximate cost for these pumps that we're talking about is $540,000 over 20 years. So if you look at 540,000 cost over 20 years added to that low pressure system, add another 540,000 because now you've got 40 years, now you're up 1 million something in the actual cost of these low pressure pipes, pumps compared to just replacing the, the sewer with what we've got. So somebody's going to be paying another 1.4 million than what it shows there on the 3.3 million. You have what Weston and Sampson says. Um, Weston and Sampson also did not recommend these pumps. They might well have had they been asked, but they were never asked. The town just asked Weston and Sampson to give us a price on the pumps, and, and so they did. Hull has a lot of these pumps. And Cohasset has. But Cohasset has a lot of these pumps because they got ledge and they can't put in anything else. Hull, which this company just worked for, decided to rehab their gravity sewer right on the ocean to do a rehab of that, not to go with the pumps. These are just different notes that I had over the period. And also, as far as the pumps warranty, it's worth garbage for the point because it doesn't apply to any act of God, any freezing, fire, electrical storms, floods, etc. The, the warranty is null and void. It doesn't cover any of those things. And these are all the things that we have done with the point that's going to cause us to fail. A lot of these pumps, such as the select ones pump, hasn't been in there long enough to fail. We, we don't have that kind of experience. And the town can sit there and tell you that these pumps don't have problems because they don't know about it because they don't maintain it. And they haven't asked Mahoney for their maintenance records, as I suggested many times. But anyway, we don't need to because we know it's 540000 every 20 years. Please add to that. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> um, OK. So we've heard you. Well, we can talk about it here. I, I do have one question for you because I assume that cost came into your analysis in terms of what to do. If cost wasn't a factor, and are the two systems comparable functionally 
without cost being the bulk of the room. They cost the same. Yeah. A loaded question. <laughs> well, is, I mean, old system should last 50 years. Let me, let me sort of have to answer that. This one's going to be harder to put in than this one. Which but. is, um, when I'm frequently asked, can we do something? My answer is always, yes, we can. We can do it. We can do, we can, we can move out. It's just, what are you willing to pay for? So again, cost is irrelevant. So, you understand these people, I, I would guess that there's probably maybe 40 or 50 homeowners here, not, and they, their concern is they're going to lose power, they've got a pump there that they, they have to rely on, and they don't want to rely on the pump. So we, we all understand that, right? We get it, we get it. So, and it's a real concern. So if they're costing the same, I can see why they would want a gravity phone system. Yeah, so I would agree. Obviously, if something can work by gravity and not have a mechanical item involved, then that would be, in a perfect world, preferable. All in favor? A seamless system has no potential for high eye below ground versus a segmental <coughs> system that is below the ground. So, so the however part is that, so I was going to say the same thing. If we didn't forget, you know, take the, if it was the same dollar amount for whatever system, given the challenges in this particular location, is the is the pressure at, and, and taking the pump system aside. Is that system, as far as protecting us from I&I, &I, your recommendation? Yes. For that location? Yeah. Well, I wasn't listening. What did you say? Why? 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 Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I asked if cost off the table and forgetting the specific you know, <clears throat> cost of the pump to the individual. Given the location, <coughs> given the challenges at the point, is pressure, pressurized the preferable engineering? Yes. Can we say answer why? Why is it the best? Because, because it's seamless. Yeah. Because it is seamless and you have no potential for I.I. in the future, which is the main focus of why why do, why does it be important? So I'm going to just try to, so we've got really, and again, we're, we're kind of sensitive. So we've got a decision to make here with the vote on this tonight. It seems like there's really three things that we got to, that we're, we're you know, the, the amount of money we'll have to figure out later and whether there's going to be a betterment to all of the people or not and whether the grant's going to be associated or not. But we've got electricity and we've got I and I. Um, you know, are kind of the, the main points of contention. You know, we, we can get a seamless thing, but we're not going to have any I and I in the future, or less likely to. And we've got a situation where the pump that's, that is going to put the homeowners in, in um, you know, a condition of losing electricity and having a, a bad situation. So, um, so those are probably two of the main points that we need to consider. Kevin, you can have the last word. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. I, I, just, I just want to add one thing. When we typically replace a water line or a sewer line, we replace the main line and then we bring the service laterals up to the property line. From the property line to the houses become the responsibility of the owners and that's their cost to bring them over to the to the roadway. So there is some, I didn't want to say there's no cost associated with just more gravity, but there is cost associated with the homeowners to make those connections. Regardless of which way we go? No, just for the, if, if it's a gravity system, they would still have to replace from the property line the home itself to the service. So what if they did they were, You would hook them up. We, we would rehabilitate the main, but all of these services for each lot are no longer to code. And according to our policy, must be brought up to code to be able to reconnect. Um, so if directed to, we would certainly rehabilitate the main but that would impose a cost burden to the homeowners here 
where they would have to replace their entire service from the street to their house at their cost up front immediately in order to connect back to town sewer. And how much is that cost? Yeah. It's a different situation for everybody. Somebody's got nice fine pavers and they have to cut the pavers and remove them up, the cost would be greater if if it's, ten, if it's a 10 foot stub or a 30 foot stub, the cost will vary. So I, I just want to bring that forward also. No, that's, that's a real cost. Very valuable. Um, is the $2.2 million, and I, I want to be clear, we shouldn't look at grants as being the only reason why we should do something, because sometimes we shouldn't take the grant money, we just shouldn't. But my question is, on that $3.3 million, is, a, is it a $2 million grant from the state? Is it dependent on the, this uh, pressure system versus a gravity system? The grant is based on a pressure system. So if we went to something else, we would have to go back to the state and ask if we could amend the grant for the new system. But it's possible it could be amended. It's possible it could be. It's possible that it's I know. All right. Um, so in other words, this is not a matter of the state environmental people saying that you must do this in order to qualify for a no, sewer this grant. No, this is not an environmental grant. This is a mass works grant. Okay. So it's an economic development grant. Okay. So it's going to cost us as a town more if we don't go with the alternative where we currently have a grant. But my question would be, perhaps we should ask the state to look at what if we would go with, and yeah. I think we should try to get down to two alternatives at this point. We need to do that on the last meeting. Yes. Yeah. Although I wasn't there as long as I was there. <laughs> <laughs> what you get in a democracy, you get in a person. Well, it so, hasn't been, you know, they haven't agreed to put it to another system. No, they didn't really go talk that yeah. for the mass storage project. Right. But I think the, the fact is, we, we is that bid still legitimate? I, I didn't reach out to the contract. Okay. I want to wait till the oh. decision made one way or the other. All right. Just so to this, attention to a yeah. couple of things. If we were to go back to the drawing board and a gravity system, that will have to be designed. Our our force main system was designed, we did look at the individual lots to identify challenges in construction and design and prepare that for a bid package. The gravity system would have to go back to design, um, I would estimate probably eighty dollars to $120,000 for the design for that, um, that the town would have to uh, take. And then the gravity system again would impose a cost for replacing to the homeowners um, and you'd asked a number for that. I think they average for this length of run would probably be in the ballpark between five and ten thousand dollars per property. For the I do want to talk about the environmental concern a little bit. Give it a second. Give it a ten second environmental concern. Uh, we have had backups here before, uh, an issue where the groundwater pressure has been so high when a sewer blockage occurred in this area, instead of leaking down into the ground, the groundwater pushed it up through the road and overflowed on the roadway. Uh, I had this very confused for a while. It was initially identified as a water line leak because those are those do bubble up. Sewer typically doesn't. Uh, this shows that you know during a flood condition when those pipes are inundated. Uh, the sewage and the floodwaters are probably free flowing with the groundwater. Um, and it's not, it's certainly not <coughs> ideal environmentally speaking. So, what he's saying is it's flooding, don't flush. <laughs> it's contaminating the groundwater. So, between the board, are, are we ready to vote on this tonight, or do we want to have another short meeting where we would do whatever due diligence we need to do and vote? At another meeting. I prefer that option. I think folks need uh, some time to read the material again, um, just so everyone's informed. As David brought up earlier, you can feel the really, that needed to know is really it has everything right now. That's my personal opinion. Is and I, I really would want feedback on this. I mean, I, I would be curious to see if people would be okay with. After having a chance to digest this conversation, look at the study, you know, look at the information. If they could provide us before we would meet with their written concerns and comments, um, so that we we have your information without. I mean, obviously, I want to 
I personally would love to hear what you had to say, but um, I think it would be more efficient if we got it running ahead of time. I feel like I have enough information, but if you wanted to contribute more, would that be possible, Mr. Chair, to yeah. do it that way? It, okay. And I. Yeah, I, th I, think we've heard what you, think yeah. That's okay. I think we've heard what you say. Unless you say something that we haven't thought of before, you know, we've got we've got all the information. We have to digest it. I mean, the the one thing that one of the women in the back mentioned is, you know, if this if this is going to cost you, I, I get it that you want the gravity system because of the electric component. If it's going to cost you a betterment of four million dollars and five to ten grand per household to get your lateral load up to it, is that other than getting it for free, is that what you want? Yes. 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 So you want to pay twenty or thirty thousand dollars per house, and you're speaking for maybe fifteen percent, twenty percent of the population there to get this system as opposed to the other one. Yes. You all, no one's saying no. Someone's got to say no because someone no. said I'm not grabbing that. for grabs. You'll pay forty thousand dollars for that. Yeah, but we ought to really that, that, that five to ten thousand dollars is that we ought to poke at that. So you guys that's that's not the that's that's right. That's not the I'm just throwing a number out there. You need something you know I get it, I get it. I made it up. Yes, ma'am. I'm the person who brought up the financial burden. And I would rather do the graduate system and, and over time be able to pay that than not have five thousand dollars to replace the pump. Oh my god. Okay. Like, how much Great. Yeah. So what we'll do at this point is let's reconvene to vote. So no discussion next time. Vote on what we're gonna do here at our next meeting. There'll be no discussion. Yes, there'll be minimal discussion. Let me just say one other thing. I asked the group. We're gonna have a meeting before Labor Day. Does, does the point you have to yell still at the limit or most people are ready? We get around or so. Right? Right? Yeah, we've had a lot Is that too far? Well, people showed up at the last meeting. They didn't know they live within 30, 40 miles, most of them. I mean, it was October or something, not January or February. Okay. Sean, I'm going to follow. Dave, we're done. So. <laughs> no, I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> We need to have a meeting of the association yeah. Yeah. ourselves within the next week before any voters stay. Because if you recall the last meeting, the board selected throughout the offer of if a pump failed, the town would replace it. Is that not true, Sean? He's not yeah. here anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just that was John's comment. That was John's comment. Yes, that's right. 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 That, no, that, that that's, is, a, that's a that, great question. Yeah. We don't really. Well, I think we need to put some numbers together yeah. for everybody. And you can't There's no way that this board should be voting on this just nilly willy. You've got okay, to we're not. 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 Yeah. May I recommend? Um, yes. It would be very constructive to review uh, the pump maintenance question separately by, by, by this board. Um, but the system that we're proposing as a system, we feel very strongly about, and it will reduce our town-wide costs the most. It will address the environmental issues uh, more than any other system will. And as a lasting fix for this issue, it eliminates the I&I, &I, the pipes are sealed together so that it doesn't come back 5, 10, 15 years later. Um, I, I would like the system to be looked at and then the maintenance looked at separately. Uh, well, we'll be looked at in the cost component. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. First off, I'm sorry for everyone. That, that discussion went way longer than we had uh, a lot of hours. It was a good discussion, but I apologize for you guys having a break. Um, Rain will be back in two seconds and we will jump right in. But we are going, no, actually, are there any walk ins? <laughs> <laughs> Very smart. <laughs> I thought I'd join them. Right. I just approved everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get a new car. You get a new car. These next ones should go much quicker. <laughs> uh, I got one thing that I need to throw out there. All right. Yeah, we, Lorraine's got to take my next one.
Oh. I can just tell it to his back. She'll be back in a second. So how'd you guys like Heritage Days? <laughs> oh, really? Great. Oh, yeah. Great a round of applause oh, for Linda yeah. since she's Good job, Linda. Good job. Good job. The weather worked out. No issues. Yeah. Good job. I'd like to know if there is one on how or not the one on the house or not. Um it's only amazing for me. It hasn't been really picked up yet, so we have all kind of pages and post no, I mean the chair. I know pretty soon have I call and say oh. Okay. So are there any walk-ins? Seeing none will move on. What's that? I think they all walked out. Um report of the town administrator. Jim. Uh, just one thing I want to get out, um, a private resident has received a permit for Saturday night to have fireworks on the harbor at 9.15, it'll be about 15 minutes. That is through the fire department, the state fire marshal office, so it doesn't actually come to this board. There's a series of requirements that person has to meet. He has met it, so he has been issued that permit. So it'll be a small barge in the harbor, Harbor Master Police and the uh, fire department will all be on scene. And it'll be about 9.15 for about 15 minutes. So we have the booming and see the fireworks. Sort of. Inside the harbor? Inside the harbor. That's state regulated? Yep. Fire department and state fire marshal. Yes. Great. Fields on track? Fields on track, and we'll meet you tomorrow. Great. Um, I do want to bring up one thing uh, for Jim, and we've talked, spoken about this. So um, in terms of the water part of it, I've spoken with the rest of the board members, and what we'd like to do is um, ask you to get the water department involved in terms of a, uh, a water filtration system or program for um, a res a residents who are kind of chronic victims of brown water. Um, a lot of people come and they know we're doing a lot of things long term, um, but it's really a short term solution that is a little um, less functional than, than we'd like it to be. And, and part of the discussion that the board has had, and I spoke with Paul individually, is um, there are probably some situations where an individual should have a water filtration system and access to filters for that system for situations that cannot be resolved or are not um, incident driven, i.e. a fire in your area, a water main break, a, um, a 4th of July rush type situation. If you're on a bad road with bad plumbing, uh, with a, a smaller type pipe, and you chronically get brown water, then the board believes that there should be a result for you before this problem gets resolved. And it's not going to get resolved in um, weeks or months. It's going to be resolved in years. And uh, what I'd like the water department to do is come back and find a, a, a high quality water filtration system and kind of the parameters to diet, to uh, diagnose when, who is a chronic person, and what should those criteria be, and then bring it before the board, and then we can discuss the parameters of that. We're not going to give a water filtration to everybody in, in town because they want one, but people that are, um, like I said, those chronic victims, we want to try and come up with a program that they have some sort of relief until the whole system gets resolved. So um, I think we're all in, in agreement of that. So if you can, you know, maybe in a couple meetings, come back in September. With yeah, Kevin's having a water, uh, water group meeting next week, and this is one of the things we want to kick around. Okay. Um, I know we talked about filters, we talked about some of my filters again, uh, paper on the water bill, so there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff kicking around. But I'll bring this back. Well, that's, this is one point that I think the board likes. So I'll, yeah. I'll take this back. Yeah. So, the direction the board. Right. so again, the two components are what identifies a chronic victim and what is a good water filtration system for them. Um, of course, the town would not be responsible for installing it, but they would be potentially be responsible for paying for it and for the filters that you can So that's that's a good step forward. I think the board would respond. Anybody else? Anything else for Jim from anybody else? Okay. Then we'll keep moving along. Um, so um, we have a discussion to vote for an acceptance of a donation for Kedworth Cemetery. John, is are you handling that? Yes, I am. Great. Um, Come on up. So, um, a former resident, um, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ladd, um, have graciously um, stepped forward and um, gave the town a donation of, it, it turned out to be about approximately 45 
It's been a, about almost a two-year um, endeavor, discussion, all back and forth. Um, we've designed and came up with um, two new columnariums for the Cutworks um, expansion. They're uh, 48 niches a piece, so it's 96 new niches. Um, we already have the approval for the base as part of the project. So this is no cost to the town. The donations coming in. We have a contract that's in front of the town account now. Um, everything looks proper and, and looks like it's a go. Um, we crossed all the T's and off the I's, went out with three bids. We looked at all the different um, designs and factors involved, whether it be weather or. Um, and then with us, with the military, we have the military niche plaques that uh, right now on the old system. We have to take out the brass plaque, drill them, put these plaques in, put them back in the ground. Um, with this system, I went ahead and we designed it so they're pre-drilled. So now with DPW, when they go out to put these on, it's a pressure. They push it right through. The holes are already there. They screw them in. It's nice and clean and easy. It's a, it's a real nice, uh, real nice system. It looks really nice. So, um, so that's where we're at. How big are the structures? Um, so they're, I want to say they're, they're five, oh, five feet, five and a half, probably almost six feet tall. Solid uh, uh, granite, the uh, base is real solid. The interior is all granite. They have uh, inner doors out of granite. So when you have a ceremony, you take the outer door off, which are all smooth granite uh, with chrome or chrome uh, fittings on them. Um, we take that off, we're going to have a table, um, a pres presentation there, so people come up and they'll have the presentation. The inner door will be closed, it's granted. So once the niche niches go in, and they fit three, um, that's how big the insides are, um, you put that door on and solve it. So a lot of these that you see around, the doors go on and insects can get in there. Uh, when it's cold weather, you can't open them and freeze. With this solid frame, it's still it's, 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 uh, maintenance free. So it's six feet by? Um, I want to say. And what did you mean by fits three? So when you open that up, um, you can fit three of those um, cremains. They give you the boxes. You know, the, the, so not the big urns. You can fit the small urns in there. You can fit three of those in there. Usually from the funeral home or if a family is doing their own boxes, they're a little bit smaller. So the ones that stay in the ones that come from the funeral home, you could put three in there. So, three so that's what I'm saying, that's how big we have. So what we're doing is normally to the, the veteran and the spouse go in there. So occasionally if um, there is a child uh, that has um, maybe been you know, a disability from childhood, is allowed to be buried with parents. So at least we know they can fit in it too. Right. So. Any questions? I do. Yes, um, I heard three numbers tossed around, so I just want to make sure we go with the right number. So you said 446. Um, our note says 446. And the letter says they donated 40,000. So what's, yeah, so what's, so what's going on? Yeah, so what's going on? That's why we put in the letter that he, he, if we needed more, he's, he's been very generous. Okay. Um, so once we went out to the factory, I took, he flew in from uh, Maryland, we went up to the factory. Franny also came with us from up the DPW, and we went over this, and we kind of designed what we wanted, uh -huh. and the owner worked with us, uh, Bruce, great guy. Um, we had a, with Mr. Ladd, he's um, particular, um, but he knows what he wants. Um, and he did, he went for the, the high-end um, unit there. So what he did is he wanted a little bit smaller. We started looking at it. We didn't want it too tall. So, uh, so is it 44-6 or something? So it's 44-6. He's okay. all the other. So what he'll do is he's okay. giving us the check right now. It was 42-6. And he's going to give us his, his own personal check to also for another two. Uh, so we do a third and third. So he'll put that into that account. And then, uh, and then right. Right. Uh, motion. Somebody else can figure out what the answer is. 44-6. 44-6. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll be the final. 
So that's, that's, a, that's a check for two, and then we have another check for two. All right. Any other questions? I have a comment. Yes. This is not the first time I've heard this name. I mean, this, this oh, his, his family's oh. loud as the hot grass is, the whole town walk. Um, you know. yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 So I, I very, very generous. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. yeah. thanks, Sean. We're, mm. we're trying to rush through this. And we you need to pay. Hey, you know, we have a guy who is huge. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We appreciate that. Uh, so much. Uh, yeah, he's constantly on the phone when we work. You know, so he's well involved. And did you twist the arm of the manufacturer discount to the Yes, we did. We got a military discount with it. Yeah. 
between Seth and I. Um, well, so I'm here. Uh, we made it to Tree Harbor's celebrating its 10th anniversary. Wow. Uh, being operated by um, the Kui's, uh believers in us. Um, and so we're having a little party on uh, August 11th, Sunday. Um, 46 is going to be family, and then 69, we're going to open the dog watch to the public. Uh, something a lot of people have been asking about, I know. Um, but um, this will be a one time thing, and we'll see how it goes. But um, we are asking that you have a band. Um, it's actually uh, Jenny and the Nightlife who just played at Heritage Days, and they're very good. And at least one of the band members used to play at the dog watch under a different name, but um, so we thought that was kind of a nice little addition. And they would be playing only from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, out of the patio. We're having a tent, um, you know, put on the patio, so that will help with the sound too. But I did speak to all the, um, almost all the abutters personally.
Saturday. Um, and I think that's it. We've had it for three previous years successfully and uh, no troubles. No complaints? Jim, no complaints on this? Uh, in the prior years? No? Um, did you notify any letters? Uh, we did. Yes. Um, any letters here? So all third parties in money? Yeah. Well, we, we, we notify the abutters uh, of the party. We notify everybody of the abutters that would be, you know, yeah, no exactly. one to tell. Right. So, yes. Right. And the only music is for live entertainment is on your Correct. Your house. Yeah. First respondents know because it's not too often we walk off the road. That's fine. I don't have a problem. We've done it four times? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Any other questions from the board? From the audience? Seeing none. Um, can I have a motion? Move to approve closing both ends of Lincoln Avenue for a block party on August 10th, 2019, 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. Second. Second one is Conley. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Now, one second. So they're blocked with what? Like song horses or yeah. something? Yeah, so they can use the word. Right. Um, and it was also for the kind of the outdoor entertainment portion of it. I'll kind of close in with that. It's the next one. We're doing that now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Tony um, interrupted me. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Just kidding. Your turn. <laughs> Move to approve an outdoor entertainment permit for a block party at Lincoln Avenue on August 10th, 2019. Public party Second. Second one, Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous. Great. Have a good time. Have fun. Have fun. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah. Thanks for staying late. <laughs> All right. Now, we are, uh, we have a discussion vote for a fork in the road catering request. Lori Cook. Hi, come on. Hello, I'm Lori Cook. I am Cook. <laughs> Double fork in the road from Pembroke and Norwell. Uh, we've been requested to come to the, in, um, the Maritime Center and Citrus. I'm thinking about the end of three job uh, catering for them when they have out of town gas for their breakfast and lunch for them. Um, this is the first time that we will be serving liquor, just wine, it's a bridal shower. Um, but we did obtain a uh, year-round liquor liability insurance so that we would have that policy for the other events that come up in the future. Are your, your servers tip certified? Yes. Um, any questions from the board? Do we do we have a limit on the number of caterers, Lorraine? Or we don't have a limit. Well, we've got a few that have dropped off. So, you know, and these excellent here in the very Good. <coughs> Great. Um, any questions from the board? Any questions from the audience? Pam, you also? No. <laughs> this food. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, yeah, okay. I'll take a motion. Thank you. Ms. Canfield for the discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye, it's unanimous. Thank you. Wait, one more. Move to approve the one day wine ball liquor license for Fork the Road at Citroen Maritime Center on August 8th, uh, August 11th, 2019, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Second. Second one is Conley for the discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye it's unanimous. Great. This is an exciting little time in the event. Now we are on a uh, discussion book for a special event, Farm and Garden Day at the uh, Man Farmhouse. Okay. You guys can stay right there. Can you stay here? Can you stay right stay there. Right here. So, um... Just your name, Gigi. Yep. Judge Moraki and Faith. The famous Faith Bauer Malone <laughs> from the Garden Club. Um, the police know that. Yeah. <laughs> so the Historical Society and the Garden Club have teamed up to hold this farm and garden day at the Man House to showcase that property. We feel like it's property that's not well known to um, our residents. And um, we think it's a golden opportunity to take a look at the history of the house, which has a really rich history of having uh, five generations of the same family since the house was built up until 1968 when the last uh, man 
family member passed away a person in. Um, so we were awarded a grant through the, through the Citroen Education Foundation, which is great. Um, we are moving forward to hold the Farm Day on the 21st of September. Um, as part of our grant, we were able to hire a coordinator, and it's Jean DeJacques-Mandria, um, who couldn't be with us tonight, but sends her best. Um, we are working with Harbor Insurance to get the liability insurance coverage required by the town. We will have that. Um, and we um, plan to do, you know, have various vendors kind of keep it low-key and historical from uh, taking a look at farming in situate, beekeepers, um, you know, farm animals, small animals, um, hay rides, there will be food vendors, um, some what, team, what Gene terms mellow entertainment. Um, and that's our, that's our plan. We, um, we are ready and willing to use it and can easily, I think, comply with the requirements for you know, we're going to have um, police there to coverage, to do coverage to help us with parking and that kind of thing. So, any okay. questions? Any questions from the board? Oh. Yes, Karen. Just so, so you don't have the insurance yet, so we'd have Not to yet. we'd have to make the yeah. permit pending. The reason, just the reason, just quickly, we don't have it yet is because we're still waiting to double check on the certification for the various vendors particularly the food vendors I know. Um, but no matter what we, we end up with for that, Jean tells me that she never hires any vendors who aren't, who don't <coughs> supply the, the necessary certification. And then we will have the coverage um, with the town on the policy for the liability coverage that's required as well. And the board of health signs on the food trucks? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The, all the, the vendors that the food vendors are already certified, I believe, through the board. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you. I, thought, yeah. there's, I think there's only two of them. So. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. you already had the board of health approval, or you will get Well, that? I don't know. When yeah, for, we could. It's a special good. permit okay. application. I, I haven't heard anything back. Right. We'll, we'll just assume a lot of time. If there's any questions from the board of health, I don't know. Well, the Board of Health is asking if they need a common VIP license as well because they're on town property. Is the Manhouse town or is it? Yeah, the, the Manhouse town, town property. They're, they're not, they don't need a common VIP unless they serve food every day. Yeah. That's why they filed a special event permit. Yeah. So it should be contingent on their insurance and Board of Health and approval. approval. And you'll need to submit. The first I'm hearing of the outdoor entertainment is tonight. Yeah, I was going to ask on that. Yeah. So, so we're going to need an outdoor entertainment permit as well. Yeah, we don't, I don't know yet what that entertainment's going to look like other than Gene was focusing on, um, you know, we're not going to have a band. We're going to, you know, it might be like a fiddle player or something. That something that tends to be historical in nature in terms of the music and entertainment that would match what you would find at that property in its day. Okay, so you'd have to submit for an outdoor entertainment with that, but I would suggest yep. you probably don't need to come back in because you just explained it. Okay. Did you have letters need to notify? Yeah. Have the letters been notified? No, I did. Mm -hmm. And you already get that piece from the assessor's office? Yep. I'll want to change it. What she needs to do. So it seems like you're not quite there yet. No, we're not there. <laughs> so, but you waited all this time tonight. I mean, we can pass this contingent on all those things that you haven't done yet, or you could do those things and come back and we'll pass it. I mean, Most either time. way. Do, sure. what do, you, do a contingent on I think we should pass a contingent yeah. on uh, just three things. Insurance, board health approval, and an outdoor entertainment permit. And the butters? And the butters? And the butters? And that's part of the outdoor entertainment Okay. Permit. So they'll, they're going to have to come back for a motion on entertainment. Well, they won't, but we're going to have to have another motion. Yes, yes. That's what can happen. One minute. I'll just say. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, and there have mm -hmm. been events. They've, 
I don't know which organization you've done events at the site before. Yes, Wait, the Garden the, Club does their idea. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the sale. Yeah, garden sale. Um, but they've never had entertainment. Um, in or space, uh, we developed the garden in uh, 1980, and in 1986, uh, uh, Leo was deed over to the town, so we're under the town, but we worked very closely with historical and bringing the third graders in so they visit, and it really, it just instilled, it's so beautiful to watch these third graders getting hooked on nature and history, so it's a nice collaboration that's built up over the years. And I'm looking at some tender grade groups, so, late 1950s and the same way. What are you doing? No. Sure. Nice. So is the, is the event taking up, like, it sounds like bigger than when I read it, what I thought it was going to be. So there's going to be food vendors out there, there's going to be events for kids to do, there's going to be... Activities. So the whole On the property is going to be full with stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right, does someone care? Why don't you try to make that one? Sure. Move to approve a special event permit to Gretchen Meraki and Faith Cloudburn and Maloney of the Situate Historical Society and the Situate Garden Club for Farm and Garden Day at the Man Farm House on Saturday, September 21st, 2019 from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. contingent upon receipt of insurance, Board of Health approval, and an outdoor entertainment permit. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye is unanimous. And what about the parking? Um, well, when the garden club holds their annual sale, well, a lot of the parking is done on the green, on Greenfield Lane. So they'll park in Greenfield Lane. Um, and that's, I mean, that's the whole reason to have the police as well help assist with that. <laughs> uh, okay, any questions on the parking? Can they park on the green? I assume so, right? Yeah, yeah they always do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can we park on the green? I don't think, well, we can't give them permission to park on the green, can we? Yeah, it's town property. Is it? Right. Yeah. Can I have a motion? We did that already. Move to, to move, move to Oh, park. no, we didn't. Sorry. Move to approve parking for the event at Elm Park Green. Second. Second by Mr. Harris for the discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. It sounds That's like a great event. I felt like being ordered. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Faith, it sounds like another plant Thanks sale. Thanks for staying up for the event. It sounds like another plant sale to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is Stacy Carney here? Stacy? Carrie. Carrie, I'm sorry. That's all right. Come on up, Stacy. So we have a discussion vote on a a special event, I guess. Yeah. Stitch with Stacy. Well, we didn't really have anything else to call it. So Darn bombing. Yeah, yeah, we did better than <laughs> <laughs> Three, four, nine, 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 yeah, yeah. Typically, yarn bombing is done like undercover of night, and you go and you knit things and you put it on public property, and then nobody really knows who left Sean it. Does it all it's an art installation. <laughs> uh, here, I'm asking permission to decorate uh, two trees adjacent to my shop. I, um, I'm Stacy Jones Gary. I'm 701 Country Way, and I own 761 Country Way, formerly Dottie Splinters, now Stacy Stitches. Mm -hmm. uh, and Stains. Uh, so it's uh, what we're asking to do is a community event. I have um, on the on season September through March a uh, bi monthly group, knitting group called Stitch with Stacy, where people come and hang out with me and crochet and knit. It's like a knitting circle. And um, this would be a special version of that where community members and members from other communities around us would come to the store and knit or crochet pieces that we would wrap around the trees and the broken lamp post in front of my store and to decorate and celebrate the fifth year anniversary of my network business. Yeah, all right. Which is kind of crazy. Um, I've been in other people's stores and this is now my own shop. My, my first time having my own store. So, um, and then we would leave it up. We have a yarn crawl coming into town. We're part of the South Shore and Cape Yarn Crawl. Um, so we expect a lot of people for that. So it would be nice to have it up as an art installation piece. 
um, it would stay up until um, the one year anniversary of the shop, which is the uh, first weekend in October, where we would um, cut it off the trees and um, take it down. Um, most yarn bodies on live trees, um, if you take it down within six weeks, it doesn't harm the tree. If you use fibers such as wool, cotton, um, and linen, and you know, organic fibers, then it doesn't do any harm to the tree. Um, we would only go up the trunk and not into the branches so that the DPW, if they need to trim the tree or do any work, it wouldn't interfere with that. Um, <coughs> we're also asking that the fee be waived for this event because we're not, we don't need any police detail or we don't need any town help. We're just really asking permission to use your trees and the plant post out in front of the store for a little over a month. Um, it should be a fun, um, Community event is free. Um, it should be a lot of fun for fiber enthusiasts. Fiber enthusiasts. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is the fee? Fifty dollars? hundred dollars special event application fee. Yes. Question is if, if you had a, 
if, if the rest of the North Sedgwick um, merchants aren't aware of the event, I would encourage you to reach out and let them know because there's been a real effort to try to coordinate all of you know what's going on there so everyone can help each other and, and, and stimulate, and that would be a great thing to coordinate with them and just let them know. I don't know if you've done it already or not. No, I, I think I may have mentioned it at the last meeting. I don't remember, okay. um, but yeah. We all know. No, 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 as soon as we see the things on the trees. <laughs> You know, it will be self-advertising. Yeah, but I go to the, I go, you know, I go to all of the North Central Business oh, Association meetings. I also am a well, representative for North Central Business Association meetings with the friends of North Central. So um, they also know about the this event. So and, and I think everybody knows, but I can't remember exactly if I. Anything to put North Central on that in a positive way is okay with me. <laughs> We have lots of events coming up this fall. They are following the fall for such a event and, and, and this, and um, hopefully more in the future. Great. Okay, so we have to vote whether to um, allow the event and then also to waive the fee. My thought on the fee yeah. is, unfortunately, if we waive it for you, we'll have to waive it for everybody. I'm happy to pay. It was just suggested. Yeah. That's what it means. It's been paid, waived for. Ms. Burbine, did you have a question? Yes, it's been waived for the situate merchants, but I thought the situate, it's been waived for any number of different groups. Okay, um, thanks. Um, any comments on the feet? Waiver. Okay. Well, I, I'd rather we had some sort of a written policy about who we waived and we didn't. Five of us, so we'll just vote, and it'll come out how it comes out. <laughs> so let's let's have a uh, motion for. Oh, there's not even a motion to waive the fee. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, well, let's, let's see, see if we approve it first. Yeah. <laughs> let's try the motion. Right. So move to approve special event permit to Stacy Jones Carey, Stages Stitches and Skeins. 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 Seven Seven Sixty One Country Way to decorate the tree and lamppost in front of the shop and the tree directly to the right of the shop with a yarn bombing to be named something different on August 31st, 2019 and taken down on October 5th, 2019. Second. Second by Ms. Conley. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye it's unanimous. Um, do I have a motion to waive the administration fee? Or no, the special permit, special, special event, event fee. Move to waive the special event permit fee uh, to Stacey Jones, Gary. Second. Second by Mr. Harris for the discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All against? Aye. Aye. Three to two, it passes. Thank you. Great. Aye. Moving right along, we have I think 
that piece, you know, in terms of that technical capability to do the job, I think I have all of those. Um, but honestly, my interest in doing this is really around um, just having the opportunity to ensure that people who come to board and the boards are heard, you know, that are heard with empathy, and that people who come to, you know, as the butters or those who have something to say about what comes before the zone board of appeals are also heard with empathy, and that, um, you know, we continue to try and make the best decisions we can for the good of everybody um, within the parameters of how the, the uh, zone regulations are. But I think it's, um, I mean, I think people who do this kind of work do it Obviously, your contribution to the town has been substantial, yeah. so thank you for continuing to raise your hand. Um, you did mention, though, um, that one of your attractions to this was to you know, treat people with empathy and listen and, and all that, which is all, of course, very admirable. The, the Zoning Board of Appeals, though, has to uh, conform to the law, and they, you, you, have, you can only uh, approve Heal as long as we use the parameters, and I just want to make sure you're comfortable with that. That you know, even if it may not be the most sympathetic thing, that you are really constrained by what you can allow. Okay. Um, I don't, in my professional life, have any problem saying no. And, but what I really believe is that in order to be effective, that everybody has to be heard. And at the end of the day, everybody feels like they had got a fair hearing, that even if the answer doesn't come out the way they want it to, at least they feel like they were heard. But there is actually, um, I mean, like half of my job is negotiating, and I don't have any problem being on the um, fire zone, so to speak, in terms of having to make tough decisions. I just feel like yeah, at the end of the day, even if you're not getting in the way or getting what you're requesting, if you feel like you were treated with dignity, and you feel like you have a, a fair hearing that you at least walk away saying, well, I understand why. I'm not happy, but I understand why. And I think that's the part that kind of, you know, really interesting. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Well, more I can add, uh, other than a senior in action, what she rolls up her sleeves and works out very powerful. Any committee, commission you want to volunteer for, I'll be happy to put you oh, on there. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so, so, thank you. Just this one right now. So, I, I, uh, just a couple comments. I, like Karen mentioned, the empathy comments that you made, I think it's admirable, and, and I think you listen with empathy, but obviously you have to act for the guy on you. You said that very clearly there. Um, just there's one open, it's a second alternative open, a second alternate opening on the committee right now. There's a couple of renewals that are coming up as well. So it's 
Um, in my opinion, this is probably one, of, if not the most important board in town. Um, they act on, on very important things that uh, resonate with the town. But, and I think, you know, just your history of working on other boards and working with it stands out that you've done a great job. You've, you've taken opinions and or made opinions that aren't clearly what everybody thought should be at times. Um, and that's really what you need on this board as well. To, you know, so I think you do a great job on it. Um, there's three people that are applying, and like I said, one possible position that's available right now. So that's it, and I think you do a great job. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for waiting. Yes. Okay. We're not voting tonight, as we have more interviews to do, but okay. Lorraine will let you know. Thank you so much. Good night, Aaron. The uh, next person up is, what is that name? Chris Carson. Sure. Oh, Chris isn't here. No. I'm sorry, Drew Kitchen. Yep. He's here. Hey, Drew, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good. So you want to get involved with the Veterans Service Advisory Council? Yes. Great. Tell us why. And so, uh, I'm actually one of the only three people on the police force that's a veteran. Uh, I'm also the veteran outreach officer for the police department. I've done tours in Iraq, Africa, and I also separated from the military and came back to the civilian world. So I, I know what people are facing when they do it, and it's it's just something that I, I can speak to from experience. Okay. Um, this uh, committee has been defunct for a number of years, but there's people are getting involved now and. We need a few, few more members for it to get up and going, I think. Is he? So uh, Mr. Jordan's right after the main Yeah. He's also, even though he was in the Navy, we don't hold it against so. him. <laughs> great. So I think, I think we're almost there, which is great, because we, we need to get this. It's a very important part of the town, and we need to get it, it up and running again. Um, any questions for Drew? No. Thank you for watching. I just say thank you for your service, but is there one thing that uh, stands out that you would like to correct or change or advise? Uh, so, yes. Right. So, <laughs> there you go. There, That's there, fine. there is. There is some, some things. I think. I think Ohio does a great job with their celebrations. I'd like to see us do a little more. Not mimic their celebrations, but get more involved, get more people involved, and, and do some other outreach stuff. That's great. It's a great start. It is. Karen. I'm just glad we weren't in trouble. I didn't know why you were standing over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, thank you for your service. And I'm, I'm excited to see. I think that the, um, the um, observation, or the memorials and, and, and activities that happened have been good, but there's a lot of room for um, really uh, honoring our vets. So thank you for coming forward and staying late. <laughs> well, I'm here till Yeah. Same thing. Appreciate it. Thank you, and uh, I, I appreciate you volunteering to get involved. I like, um, you know, you're, you've served obviously, and you've come as a civilian, and you're young, and uh, you know, we have a lot of different First time someone said I'm young. Yeah. But it gives, we want all perspectives from all, all different um, activity levels in, involved, so I think it's great that we have everyone involved. So. Thank you, and all right. Well, like I said, we're not going tonight, but we're going for it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And the aforementioned right. Kevin Gordon. Thank you. I think he, if, I think if Kevin is there, we would have enough people to have. Kevin, how are you? Good. Good. So why are you getting involved in the veterans? Um, you know, much as what uh, Bruce said, you know, just involvement and, and uh, trying to just, uh, he's kind of a young veteran, I'm a young veteran, and just to share some you know, knowledge and experience. So, uh, I've done some volunteer work down in Brockton, VA, and Boston, VA, a long time ago. So I think it's time to kind of get involved in the time. Right. Okay. And, and I wasn't in the Navy, he knows that. <laughs> you were? No. <laughs> no, it's in the eye. It's being fresh. <laughs> so now I have to cross out maybe that in the room. I'm like, I wrote that down. Kevin, do you have any other questions? Oh, good. Do you have more? 
I don't, just thank you. It's great just to have experience you know, veterans step in and, and start helping to take care of the next generation too. So Karen? Yeah, the same same you we answered all the questions, I think. <laughs> thank you for being here. Thank you, Kevin. The only thing I will add is you guys probably don't know it, but Kevin and his wife never miss a ship ship day. Never they're out there like all we did. So thanks, Kevin. Thanks for the yeah. and, and as I mentioned to Drew, you know, I think it's great to get perspectives from every different angle of this. And I'm, I'm glad that we're gonna have enough people to get this committee back together again. I think Stewart's really yeah. Um, and involved, and I think it'll be a real big asset to the town. So thank you for right, she talked to me about it. So. Yeah. She's not there recruiting, isn't she? Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's, we have to. Right? No, we need more of that. The historian Hannon came in, right? This one? Who? Hannon? Yeah. Yeah. So. Great. Well, thank you for coming in. All right. Um, Matthew Nelson, Economic Development. Yeah. Heck, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for sitting through the whole meeting. Yeah. What, uh, tell us why you want to be involved and what you can do to help this committee. Sure. Um, I'm a almost 19 year resident situate. Uh, and I've spent the last uh, 15, 25 years in jobs uh, in uh, financial services, technology, obviously all private sector, very commercial, uh, working through corporate strategy. Uh, business development, financial analysis, uh, new business analysis, things like that. Um, and uh, you know, I think it's a very portable skill set, although clearly from a very uh, you know, commercial uh, perspective, um, something that, you know, that I'd like to be able to, to translate uh, as a 19-year resident. I've taken a lot of the two boys uh, through the school system. I think they're, they're, they're both of us yeah. together. Um, and uh, I think it'll be, uh, you know, it's a good time. I feel like it's a good time to start getting something back. This is a uh, economic development seems like a, a good opportunity to be able to have some of my skills and contribute back to the town. Great. Karen? Anybody? Which one? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what do you think is the most important economic development issue facing the town? Just if you're number one. Uh, sure, from an outsider uh, observer uh, perspective, I mean, obviously, you know, what's going on now in Greenbush last couple of years has been uh, terrific. We see a lot of uh, activity there. Uh, downtown, Iron, obviously, you know, last weekend was, was terrific. Uh, the first Fridays, we see a lot of, uh, just you know, from the, the civilian perspective, a lot of really uh, great momentum, a lot of activity. Uh, there's been some discussion earlier. Uh, North City seems to certainly be an area that, um, uh, that needs that needs attention, needs help. Uh, I personally have a friend who tried to uh, have a business there. Uh, I think she lasted less than a year. Uh, wasn't able to get the foot traffic. Wasn't able to get enough to to, uh, to make it last. So um, I don't know enough about all all of the issues, but that's certainly an area that has, I think uh, has great potential. Clearly, with the, the commuter commuter rail stop, with the you know the, the traffic going through there, uh, that we should be able to do more of it. Um, you have great experience in just looking at your resume here, so I think you'd be a great asset to the committee. Um, what is your, uh, have you gone to any EDC meetings and sort of listened to um, their topic, their current topics? We haven't had really a presentation of EDC in a long time, so I don't really. Um, I haven't. I, I, I've looked at some of the recent agendas. Um, it seems like you know, those are kind of the consistent topics, certainly a lot of people are situated and it seems like they're divided into some geographic areas in town. Uh, the minutes are, are about three, four months old, so I'm yeah. not sure what the latest uh, meetings, uh, discussions have been. I haven't been in any meetings. Um, okay, thank you. And um, you know what, I, I just want to do this too. I'd like to get them to come in and can I talk about where they're at because I need to come Yeah. yeah. We've talked about how about the case building. Yeah. Um, but thank you for stepping down. forward because it's nice to have the finance background <coughs> and the obvious <coughs> desire to try to find some revenue in the business districts. Okay. No, it's, it is a good board and it has really been gained a lot of momentum in the last year or so. So, um, and you do have a different perspective. So, thank you for, uh, you know, one thing. As you can see, sometimes the meetings go a little late. Not usually the economic development committee, but um, 
you know, it's one night a, a month usually, and then the committee members are assigned things in between, and, and you're comfortable with that amount? Yeah. Okay. The only thing I can think of that hasn't, because the questions have been asked, but any like low hanging fruit that you can think of that you might be able to, you'd like to accomplish, a direction you'd like to see them go? Uh, to be honest, and, and I hate to put you on the spot, but I hate to say, you know, no, you know it's a fair question. You, you, um, uh, certainly, if I, I, I wish I had attended some meetings to know what their right. current mm -hmm. issues are. And I, that's all right, and I you know, didn't mean to put you on the spot, but we sat in this very room and talked about both situations, that very thing, and a whole meeting about it. First thing is soon. Take care of things. So, I appreciate you stepping up. Thank you. Yeah, I just add there's one opening, there's one renewal, there's one, two, three, four, five people that are um, um, trying to move our mind for it. Um, you've got a good, great skill set that would fill a lot of stuff. You know, I think one of the things that I, that I noticed this weekend, um, I think we've all talked about it, just the vacancies and commercial properties in town. Yeah. You know, what, trying to get dig down into that kind of what is causing this to happen. You know, or leaving, so one more spot in front of you again that's not filled right away. Um, and trying to get a grasp over, you know, from a different perspective, what needs to be done to get you know, that more vibrant both in North Citroen and the front street. Yeah, it's interesting to see how some um, some businesses, and so uh, I used to live next to a chunk of Nancy LaVanche, Nancy Prince Joy. Um, Joy's been very successful. Lucky Femme has been very successful. Um, and uh, obviously, Wolf's company has been forever, right? So it's interesting to see how some are doing so well in the location and generating so much traffic. Um, right. And, and how others are, are struggling. So, yeah, that's certainly. Strategic things. What are we trying to do? We're trying to, um, you know, increase the, the commercial base. Are we trying to get more traffic, some more tourism? You know, um, certainly we've talked about reuse of other buildings and assets of the town. Mm -hmm. So all these things are just they fall right in the daily work of what you do the work. So I think it's great. But so we're not going to be voting tonight, and uh, we will let you know. But I think. Um, Mr. Chair. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm noticing on CPC, you're, that was your number two. Uh, yeah, with, with brother, brother Well, the reason I'm asking is because there's only three candidates currently listed for CPC, no. and it's all number two. He's one of the three. Since we have so many people for economic development, rather than making them come back in for CPC, we can probably cover that now. Yeah. Good point. Is that, would you have? My, I believe that my, my background, my, my skill set is probably most would be most beneficial on, on economic development, but um, you know, as I look across the list of those things, there is that I'm not an interest in it, but um, I can contribute a little bit. So you can see uh, I can put a second on there. I don't have any specific uh, any skills. I I simply wrote this down. I, you know, I've been living here a long time. I expect to live here a long, long time, long, uh, uh, more so. Uh, it's something there that, that, that also be interesting. Great. Good. So good. We'll take that for a couple Great. Thank you for coming in, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Uh, the recording with Pat. Come over here. Oh, hi. hi. Still here. Come on up to the front okay. row. This is a test. Okay. Thanks for coming in, Barbara. Thanks for enjoying the long meeting. Um, <laughs> why don't you it's tell us? Bad, bad, bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about you and why you want to be involved with Council on Aging. Um, gosh. Well, I moved here like nine years ago to be near my son, and I love Situate. I'm a huge fan, and um, I've been looking for a way to volunteer. I worked at the Historical Society for a year, um, and when a number of people at the Senior Center encouraged me to apply for this position, because I go there. You know, I spend time there. I'm a regular. I go at least once a week, sometimes twice a week. I've participated in a lot of their activities. So I have a sense of how it works, and I listen to you know, the other people I'm engaged with, um, what their experience is. 
So uh, I feel like my background, being in community development and um, uh, community facilitation, that I have skills that would help this transition we're going to go through in the next year from a tiny little space that's really hard to schedule to a real center where you know we'll, we'll be able to have um, lots of other opportunities. Great. Um, is there any specific area that you think you could be most helpful in? Oh gosh. Um, is it programming? Is it functionality? Is it participation? Well, I think what I bring is just the ability to um, want to connect the people that are being served to the people doing the service. Um, because that's my whole career has been service. So um, I would love to be that sort of liaison person to help that get better. It can be a lot better. Kevin? Any Nope, I can take you back on, like you said, being a health coordinator and, and managing a lot of the different functions and issues while it was with adolescents. Um, I think you can handle adolescents so can assist in uh, <laughs> Well, that's sort of, you know, because right. adolescence is a population yeah. that you serve, you know, right. and seniors are a population that you serve. And, you know, just hearing people's stories and spending time with the people that participate there. Um, it's fantastic. And I like the fact that you're new to town. I, I'm always a big on someone that comes in with a fresh perspective as well. Oh. So, something new and... This is the best town. Yeah. 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 But, you, but you have a different perspective too, so it's nice. Yeah. Karen? Um, thank you for coming in. There's a lot, obviously, because of the excitement of the senior center, there's a lot of people that are interested in joining the board, so it's going to be tough to, to sort these all out. and. Um, as I mentioned earlier, obviously the, the meetings, Council on Aging meets a little earlier, 5.30. Yeah. Um, how, many, how many positions are there? There are two openings, okay. and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven applicants. Seven, okay. Yeah, that's good enough. So, um, but having said that, uh, the board meetings are always open to everyone. Have you, been, have you attended any of the actual board meetings? No. Um, so. We like to say that when there's a lot of applicants for small money places that you can always attend and put your two cents in. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's great. Thank you for coming. Great, great. Sean. Good. Yeah. Barbara, thank you very much. Okay, I think we have one more. Uh, James. Hey, Art. What? Tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to be on the postal advisory commission. My wife and I moved into 11 Bunning Lane on the night before Thanksgiving uh, this past year. Um, but we're not exactly strangers in this year. Um, so I've been looking around for something to get involved in. Um, the Postal Advisory Commission, you and I had a brief conversation about this the other day. I think this is all the challenges facing this town, I think the ocean is going to be the most severe challenge we face. And I like things like brown water. We're never going to fix it. It's going to be with us for the rest of our lives and <coughs> future generations. So I think we need um, the, the professional core that are working on these issues here. That's a very impressive group of people. And the Coastal Advisory Commission has an advisory we're working really hard. I attended their forum in the last week. And um, the, the problem, as you all know better than I know, is staggering. So I just think it's a place to help out. And I think you've got lots of qualified people for lots of boards. I'm not sure about this one. Um, I have a background, well, some background with the ocean, some background with science. But a lot of background with public policy. And I think public policy and fundraising uh, whether it's private or public, is where the challenge will be to meet, to meet this, uh, this sea level rise challenge. So, there it is. Great. 
before I started this, I just have Karen any question. Oh, love it. Next thing up. Uh, thank you so much for stepping forward. It, this, I agree with you that this committee is crucial to the future of our town, and somebody with your experience would really have a, a perspective that I mean, we cannot solve this problem by, by ourselves. So um, I really appreciate that, and, um, and, and you have a doodle, which is really nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, sweet. That's Paul. Very nice. Um, now it's great. So, were you living at the mall? I'm just curious. I, no, actually, uh, we lived in Weymouth, but I commuted to the mall for 10 years. Uh -huh. uh, first in Weymouth and then in West Glassville. Um, I love the job. It's the best, best job in the world. Well, welcome yeah. here and thank you for this. There are there are openings, which I'm sure the chair will cover. Sean? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Great resume. Thank you for volunteering. Thank you. Report committee. Um, can you can, could you tell me where um, where you live in town? I'm sorry, because we're trying to have a nice family. Family Lane is right off Cash Street. Um, right now, okay, between awesome. between Ridge Hill and Greenfield. Okay, perfect. I was just trying to get my head yeah. sort of what part of town you're from. Could be Oceanfront someday. Yeah, it could be. Well, we hope not. 14.2 feet above sea level. 14.2? Oh, right. I know you're a foot above, you know, we're not going to build to or something. Yeah, 20 years. I know. Uh, well, but thank you for stepping forward. I think um, you know, we'd like to have a nice balance on the committee to represent all parts of the town. So yes. that's why I asked. Really. Um, I think that we meet with the uh, Harbor Masters uh, replay on Memorial Day. We did. Yes. With our beautiful reading. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't go there right now. Remarkable creativity. <laughs> yes, it was. It was. They all stepped up. Yes. <laughs> Good. Well, I've met Jim a number of times over the last month, maybe month and a half. He's new to town, a ton of energy, wants to get involved. He's kind of uh, looking at the um, sister city with court. He's worked with this. I saw him meeting to this. Um, so I think it's great that you want to get involved and, and have the energy and the time to do it. So on this committee, there's like three openings. Two people have applied um, to understand the importance of it. We, you know, very attentive in the meeting, so I think the people are well, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to plug in this early in my tenure here as a city president. Uh, if I can get involved selfishly, um, it would make me very happy to be involved. Good. Well, thanks for coming in, Jim. Thank you. We'll be in touch. Yeah. I'll be in the hall in a second, you'll still be here. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for staying. Okay. That is the last of the interviews. And we are moving along to an update uh, and discussion on the outline of the community choice aggregation plan. So, Donna Roa. Donna Roa. John here. I'm John. I live in Western Mass, so I...
actually more than the two week period, so it exceeds the requirement. Um, I think that's the timing we've agreed on, and we're happy to work again with the, the town on if that's not uh, doable for any reason, but I think that, that was the plan as the last correspondent. And in the meantime, lots of work is happening. There's a website that uh, Good Energy's been working diligently on. Uh, our committee has been looking at what, what they are saying in terms of FAQs and you know, there's all sorts of links that people can drop down menus. People can, you know, hit a question and get the answer right online. And it's very well done. I mean, clearly they've been doing it for other municipalities, so they have expertise at boarding and responding to the various questions. So I did share that um, with some of the office, town office of personnel. I, didn't, I don't know if it's been distributed yet to everyone because it is still just a work in progress. But, um, I had some input on it, like for instance, it talked about the plan program being implemented, and I asked them to put the word potentially implemented in there. You know, we know that this at any point in time until rates are, you know, received and we actually have rates attached to the program that the town can walk away at any time. So um, I just didn't want any language to scare someone or put a red flag in the air about uh, that this was going forward no matter what. Um, so I think I think the work looks so they they hired a, they got a nice photograph of the lighthouse and the harbor to put on the website the town seal high resolution of the town seal and ultimately it will be a site that can link from the town's website uh, and there'll be other just just remember too that this two week review period is the is the requirement for this phase of uh, you know, applying for approvals, but the outreach, the public outreach and information uh, will continue and actually intensify toward the back end when we actually get closer to getting rates and possibly going live. So this is just to meet the initial public review period requirement, but information and promotion of the program will actually intensify as the timeline moves forward. Great. Sure. Well, I know that the Q&A and the uh, press release are already on the town website. Okay, good. As part of your, if you type in community aggregation or whatever it is, it will it will call it up. So it's in there. And I know Karen and I received the entire huge document that's not <laughs> legal, legal yeah. language. And so, um, and if I didn't forward it to everyone, I will again, but uh, just to make sure you see it. Um, I guess my one question, the timeline looks fine to me. Um, are we completely married to an opt-out versus an opt-in? Yes, by design we are. And that, that is the thinking behind that is because statistically, if it's opt-in, you get no more than 10% of people that educate themselves and take the step of opting in, whatever that step is. The opt-out captures more people. Clearly. If you were to ask someone today what they if they knew what the underlying basic service represented in terms of green component or you know, they they probably wouldn't know. Right. And one could argue that that is also holding people captive to a process that's happening under underneath. And the vote before the town, the special town meeting was just about this issue. As a town, do we want to make that default something that's more environmentally friendly or not? So that was part of the article? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know that was the big All right, problem. so I guess so my question is, when we get the phone calls from people saying, I, do, I don't want this, who's going to take those phone calls? Oh, absolutely. We, a good, good Energy is hired as a broker to okay. take those calls. So they're taking the phone calls from consumers. That's yeah, right. All right. Absolutely. And all they have to do is say no thank you. There'll be a simple process to say no thank you, I don't want this. And then they end up with basic service. Well, they go back to wherever they came from, right? Or wherever they came from. They're only going, they can only solicit people on basic service. Right. Yeah, it only affects people that are currently on basic service. So if you have an aggregator now, then they're not. Yeah, they're unaffected. It only affects the basic service customers. 
So if someone has a contract with a green energy company or... Which I just actually did a solicitation for a green energy company mm -hmm. the other day. So. Yeah, so anyone in a contract other than a basic service okay. customer, they don't care on the fact that anyone, anyway, they can opt in if they read about it, write right. about it, and write it. But only basic service customers will be seamlessly switched if it goes live and have an option to say nothing. Do we know how many basic service customers there might be in such a way? Do we have any idea? We do. They have those counts. I think the 18,000 households. It's the vast majority. It's the vast majority. Basic. The vast majority. Yeah. Okay. It's only 9,000 households. Yeah, there's 18,000 oh, residents. Residents. Yeah. So, so it's less to affect a good percentage. Oh, most of Yeah. yeah. Most people. Yeah, most customers, I think, will be affected. Well, the goal is we save money. Yeah. We well, that's it. the other thing. I mean, the argument is um, you may not like the green component and for some reason your fossil fuel, you know, attached, and that's fine. But if anything, we'll be getting, we'll be getting more. I have heard. Fossil fuel is extra. What was that? Waste <laughs> money? No, I say I would urge that. I mean, with this country's grown, it's very good. But we will be getting more competitive rates even for those people. Okay. So, so they, I, when, when those people get feisty, my, my feeling is just say no thank you and then thank us because we've lowered your rate. Do you, do you follow? But only if they opt out. Yeah, if they opt yeah. out, they still get a better rate. If they opt out, they still get a better rate. From they opt out. From the basic. Or well, well, because well, how are some bears? No, I'm saying if they, we've lowered their rates, regardless, right? They're going to have a, a lower um, basic service rate, regardless. Unless they yeah. opt out. Unless they opt out. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. Well, it's temporary. Yeah. It's temporary. Yeah. Yeah. It is temporary. <laughs> but people that are on basic service and get this um, greener component right. will probably have lower rates than the less green component with uh, on, uh, on regular basic service. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yep. It's good. Do you have any questions? No, I'm ready to get the ball rolling. I think the work's been done that we asked. Awesome. Sean? I'm just curious. I know this happens now, just out of happening advertising. Have folks reached out to you and ask questions? I think there was there were discussions on social media when yeah. we were coming to vote on this at the special town meeting about what it meant. Um, people actually don't ask a lot of questions about it. They love the idea. We had 150 petitioners. We went door to door to get people to sign for it, and those people often thanked us for doing the research on how to do this the right way and have a vetted process where they knew like that it was a sound, you know, green option. And I like getting a phone call from a stranger. Exactly. You know, you look at what's happening with the Attorney General's office right now and some of these green energy, uh, you, know, business, you know, businesses. There's, there's profiteering going on in the right. green business. So, and that, that's still door-to-door, -door, you know, sales are happening. And so a lot of people's reaction was, we'd love to have a vetted sound option that the town has kind of, you know, looked at, and we were often thanked for it. I, you know, it, 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 it really does, I think, make a business case. You know, we, we have aggregating purchasing power. If, a, you know, adjoining towns join us for the bidding, we have volume in our favor to get better pricing. It also stabilizes the price even beyond the basic service that we currently have, so that we lock in for hopefully two or three years, and your you know your bills aren't fluctuating maybe as much. Um, so I think there's so many advantages in, in the simple process of no thank you if I really don't feel like philosophically or whatever that it's the right thing. It's so easy that I don't know, you know it's not so very threatening. I don't think. So the um, so the open period will be from August seventh to September third. 
September 3rd for sure. I think the date was based on uh, feedback we got from the town about a legal notice in the mayor and it couldn't be published until August 15th. Okay. So is the date, Lorraine, do you know which one of those dates it should be? Yeah, Karen has it written in her. She has to read that. I am going to recite this. So you have, the 7th is in there and you mentioned the 15th, so that was my The question. 7th is the date of the period that starts with the notifications on the 15th in the paper. Yeah, I put a timeline that's on that. Right. That that is right. I'll have to look at the timeline. Right. I mean, honestly, it's just one of the two ways that they're really going to die. Yeah, I think it's great. I mean, it, it has the potential to be a, a win win. So right. we'll see where the prices come in, and then yeah, we'll see where it goes. Do I read this as a motion, Lorraine? You have to read that whole thing. Yes. But as a motion? No. No. You just read it. I need to just oh, inform the world of this. Yes. I you hear you. At our special town meeting on November 14, 2018, our residents voted to authorize the Board of Selectmen to research, develop, and implement an aggregation program and enter into a contract with a competitive supplier of electricity. The objectives of the aggregation program are to lower the cost of electricity, although savings are not guaranteed, gain long-term price stability, and offer more renewable energy options. The Board of Selectmen has selected an aggregation consultant, Good Energy LP, to develop the aggregation program, formulate and implement the public outreach and education program, guide the aggregation program through a very strict and comprehensive review with the approval process with the Department of Energy Resources and the Department of Public Utilities, develop a request for proposals for competitive electricity supplier, monitor and manage the aggregation program during the term of the competitive supplier contract and develop and submit all required reports to the Board of Selectmen and to the Department of Energy Resources. An important element of this process of the process leading to approval of aggregation program of a municipality by the DPU is to allow for the review of aggregation plan by residents. The aggregation plan is available for review at our municipal offices and on our website. In order to comply with this law, Residents will have a time period to submit written comments and public meeting to offer oral comments. The two-week period to submit written comments will be from the, uh, August 7, 2019 to September 3, 2019. Oral comments can be offered at a public meeting that will be held on September 3, 2019. This public review period will be completed before the aggregation plan is submitted to the DPU for their review and approval. Great. Yes. Um, should that notice uh, indicate the location of the September 3rd meeting? I don't think it's been said yet. Well, it will be in the Board of Selectmen hearing room, and it will be said in the notice to the newspaper. Okay. Oh, oh, great. Any other questions on the board? Penny? I just have one question, okay, after all this review is done and everything. Then what's the next step? I, I mean, Will the public be know, notified that their electricity is being switched? I, I mean, I don't understand. So after this, after this portion and the whole education portion, yeah. we'll go out to bid once the documents get passed at the different levels, and then we'll get quotes in from the um, okay, so bidders, and then we'll close. decide whether we're going to go forward with it. At some point in time, you will have had opportunities to get involved, and at some point, it's going to if we accept it, it's just going to switch. And you will have to know through through communication from the town that it happened, and you will have to either call to opt out or you'll have to read the benefit of better price. There'll be public outreach. Yeah, because it's something marketing public outreach campaign. Yeah, I I just think a lot a lot of people you know they they need to know when it happens and if they yeah. don't want want it. Right. What do I do now instead of just sitting at home yeah, saying? We all so, agree. Right, and that was the that was the only really. Flaw is the wrong word, but the only kind of hitch in the whole well, world that's, yeah. is people have to be paying attention. There's going to be a large number of people that just aren't paying attention, and their bills going to get switched. Well, and yeah, and they, they, they might they not have to. Be, yeah, I mean, I'm, that's a little upsetting to me. That how'd you go to town meeting? Huh? No, <laughs> <laughs> no but it, it's upsetting that all all of a sudden I don't. I just pay, pay my bills. They, they come in, I sit down, I write a check out. Okay? If I'm not paying close attention, 
if I did not want to be switched, I could have been, I, I just, there's that's a, the, that's you get a letter, you actually get a letter and this public uh, Okay, so everyone in town will get a letter you'll get saying, a letter. you'll get a letter saying, that's what I'm yeah. looking for, yeah. notification, notice? this is going to happen, yeah. so it isn't like somebody's going to be calling every one of you, yeah. saying, this one what's going on? on, what's going on, I didn't know this was happening, okay, you'll get a letter, Very good, Lisa. and it'll Thank be explained, you. and you'll have a link or a number to call to opt out if you don't if want to. Okay, yes. just there you go. And there'll be information about that letter coming. There'll be other things in town that we're going to try to advertise what's happening. Send you it weekly, I'm sure. I'll be interested in this. Right. <laughs> There you go, but I don't want it. There will be people that won't know, though, and that's why. Well, that's not. what is, is my concern. But if, well, that is not going out. Yeah, but it's going out in addition to all sorts of other outreach. Okay. Great. Do we have to make a motion, or are we good with no just motions? Motion? Great. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks. Okay. The next item is a discussion vote on 385 T Stretch of Switching Highway. A request to release the deed restriction. Charlie Cap, Cal. Cal. Oh, 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 come on up and have a seat. Boy, you guys were late. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to catch up. Okay. 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 So I'll give a quick summary and then you can tell us what's changed. He came before us. A couple months ago, three, four months ago, maybe was was it with Attorney Guard, maybe, yeah, and talked about uh, the piece of property that you own across from the reservoir, um, and you wanted to subdivide it. I can't remember at that point in time you were thinking six or eight or something. Was it, we had planned to have that many, yeah. and now since then you've thought about other things. We've gotten a lot of uh, material on the town meetings and the stuff since then to read. We're a little bit familiar with it now. Yeah, I mean, I originally went in front of you guys um, and just asked if I could uh, build a small home on the property. And then I was told to go to the town building department and ask if it was feasible to see if I could do that uh, based on like an you know, R1 form A type conversation. And he said, yeah, thumbs up. And then he said, you should really get some engineering and more to some of the houses. All right, I'll go to more. So you wrote up something. And then we just presented it as our findings, and then it was like you know like four lots or something. But that's our target today is to just see if we can build this one home on the property, you know, four or five lots. Okay. Right. And the the one thing, as we all have read, is there's a deed restriction on the property. So someone bought it from the town. The town bought it. I don't, and Sean, you were on the board that I remember the year. Um, for, I don't even know what we bought it for, but then we sold it at auction to somebody who bought it for about two hundred and forty or fifty thousand um, dollars, with the restriction that there would be no development on it because it's it's the water shed protection was the the right. 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 property, and then you must have bought it from somebody along the lines, and, and here we are today. That, that's up. Okay. So. Um, so your, your request to us right now is to be able to take that lot and break it up into two lots so you can sell the house that's currently there Correct. and build a smaller house somewhere else on the lot. Do you have plans for that? Or like, is there anything drawn out? Or where are you going to put the house? Or No. I mean, we don't really have money or the plans. Or, you know, um, we just so you're going to put it further away. Like you, well, the property's protecting the watershed to your north, I think? Where's that? Uh, west. Where's it? Where's the main? Yeah. So like the north side, your house is here, and the anything to the right going up the driveway is close to the water supply. So I assume you'd be putting that house. Well, there's already currently a structure on the property, and we pretty much just want to build a, a, a bedroom so that we get first floor with it. You just want to put a bedroom, an attachment to your current house. Uh, no, there's a, there's a second, there's an auxiliary building on the site, and our goal is to just move over there. The the you just want to add a, 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 an extension on the But in the order to afford to be able to make it a home, we have to sell the other house, so we need to divide it. 
So there's not a ton of building going on the lot. All you want to do is put an addition on the barn, but subdivide it to the. So we could keep it. So you know, the farm, you know. Right, so there's not a new structure going on. Good. Um, yes. Yeah. Go ahead. So, but you're still uh, dividing the lot into two lots, so you want to sell one, correct? Correct. So, he's, you know, he's, they're, they're potentially now be two two families in there. There will be. Yeah. yeah there will be. I mean, it's seven acres. It's a really large property. Do we have a picture of this property? You want one? something? Well, you know, that's right. <laughs> Fill you guys in a little bit. Yes. Long before, with Charlie on this was the McDermott property and sat sideways on the property. It's an older home, and I don't know. You, you would buy, we've all been buying a million times, and it was torn this way by one of the owners of the town. Well, she's going to go well, since we started talking about it. 
But any questions? Um, so it's it's much less obtrusive than I thought it was initially. Um, but it is the restriction on the property. I, I really wish I understood that color diagram a little better. But even though, you know, even though it's not as much as you thought, they're still asking to divide it, right? Right, but the restriction is still going to be on both, both properties. No, because it's one dwelling on the entire piece. Well, we can make, we can put the current restriction on both properties. The restriction is for one very guy. You have to go to town meeting. Yeah. Change. You have to go to town meeting to right. remove the restriction to not allow the subdivision, and then you would want the article to then say the property could not be right. further subdivided. Okay. We did get a letter right. late this afternoon that um, town right sent out from the yeah. conservation commission that said they don't want this property subdivided. We got a letter from conservation saying yeah. yeah. Right. I don't. Emails you know. Emails you know. Yeah, just to note that the, uh, it says in the letter that the conservation plan may unanimously oppose this. Um, and we can ask for their opinion, I think. Last slide? Yes. Imagine if they put on my desk this morning. Yeah. So here's the fact of the matter. Town Council says it has to go before town meeting for this to happen. We can't even do it. Right? Conservation is against it. I don't know if we're for it or against it. but. You can go to town meeting yourself and ask them. It's got to go there anyways. Right. Um, and you just have to. We were hoping for your support, but yeah. So I don't know that I don't know that we're prepared to give our support right now, personally, because I don't understand it quite as much as I want to in terms of the impact on the watershed. Um, I'd like to talk to conservation and find out a little bit more about that. Um, I mean, it's in a water protection district, yeah. 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 Right, so we, we studied the R1 map that goes from Marshfield all the way to Cohasset. It's the whole, a large, yeah. you know, so it's a huge area. There's many houses built along the reservoir, way closer than our barn is. Right. right now to, to support or not support it because I want to get some answers on it. Although I don't think it's as bad as I thought it was and it will get discussed in the past. Um, the question is whether we would put an article before it or you would put an article yourself. Right. That's what right. 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 So you could right. but you can easily do it yourself. You only need you know ten signatures um, for the meeting of town meeting. Um, and then you're gonna have to convince them anyways. Um, and you have to come up and say why why should they vote in favor of making this change right, right. and get uh, you know get get a majority is it just majority Jim? I believe so, yeah. yeah, so just a majority vote in town meeting. Um, yeah, our goal tonight was to hope to see if you guys would put it on, but can we just can you do your, your findings and Yeah, I mean I mean that, does anyone else have any other thoughts on it? I yeah. I'm oh, glad well, both you guys are here, Jim. If, if this Went through. Would there be any repercussions? Would we open be opening up Pandora's box? Are there others like this that would deep restrictions that have lifted and changed? Well, the two houses next door, and doesn't that have a deep restriction on it? Yes, but we kept the town kept the no, no, all, all around the surrounding. Whether well, they still have other buildable lots? I don't, um, know. I don't know if there's other places in town, but. Conservation feels very, very, very strongly. The deed restriction was put on there for a reason. Yeah, in our situation, in the situation of the water supply, tap factory, the reservoir, it hasn't changed. That it, 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 it should not be subdivided. I mean, they felt very, very strongly last night. And you. And onto that barn, you subdivide, you are opening up Pandora's box big time. Well, 
in, even in, I think the deed restriction was 20 or 25 years. I can't remember 30. exactly, but I do believe that has to go before town meeting to be lifted at that time. It, it isn't an automatic thing. So um, the town's people, too, everybody had a very, very strong opinion. It, it, this was really controversial. Very strong. Very, very that, that had to be saved, that area. So I mean, you can see what you got ahead of you. Yeah. You know, and, um, but yeah, we, we still want to keep it intact the way it is. Just yeah. add a little part to it, and so we're not changing it. Yeah. I think you've got a what? tough, sell. you know, sell, but you got to just get your your story together and the reason you want to do it, and see if if town. I've, I've seen town meeting go left when I thought they go right, and I've seen them go right when I thought they go left, so, um, yeah, we're moving that far. Yeah. Could, well, could we revisit if you guys would want to? Yeah, let us, let us do our due diligence um, and, and look into it a little bit more, and then each one of us will have our own opinion, and we'll figure it out from there. Well, I, I would recommend they have Steve draft it up, Steve got draft up an article, have us check it. File it by petition, and then it's on the mark regardless of what the position the board takes, it will go on the bar, and then the board can vote whether to support it or not at that point. Right, so yeah. special, we're going to have a special town meeting in November-ish. Mm -hmm. That you need 100 votes, 100 signatures for. Annual town meeting in April, you need 10. So, those are your two, two options. And I don't know that, Mr. Chair, that I think, um, you know, since your plans have changed a little bit, you know, in the past couple of months, Solidify exactly what you do. Well, I don't think the plans have really changed. I think our initial plans have always been just this. It was when we met with the engineer, and the engineer was like, Somebody else said, Oh, hey, you can do this, this. And, yeah. and oh, but that's my like, point. Like, like, that's not what we want. Yeah, and that's not what we're interested in. Put it on the table, put it on the table in writing, have it all clearly laid out. Yeah, yeah. we agree. Yeah, and it'd be good to know what are you really trying to do with that bar. I mean, that's these yeah. are questions that the public is just going to want to know. Yeah. Are you putting on a 20 by 20 edition on one floor? Are you probably at the most? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm I making this up. So whatever you're going to do, um, you know, just let us know, or you're going to have to let them know, and then you know, get you know, get your story together to pitch the town fair. Yeah, we had money. We just make the bar real nice and we'll bottle it, but you know, okay, But well, we understand. We certainly understand, and you understand. The town's part that you, you know the property was sold for what it was because yeah. of restrictions. Yeah, we're not we're not in for a favor. Yeah, um, I we recognize that. We have really old ties to the town too. Like my husband's family is the old Polish family in town. We've got really old ancestors, and we grew up in Cohasset, but we raised our kids here in the situation. It's just our family bonds are here, and um, I've been really really sick the last few years, and it's just the community's really helped me. We'll get all those witch notes to town meeting. <laughs> Good. Great. Well, thank you for coming in. We'll, we'll evaluate all the information. Right. And then, like Jim said, I think you should do the course, regardless of what we do. We can edit out two, three, or three. Yeah, I think so. And whether you think you can get 100 signatures for it or 10, we'll decide what meeting you're trying to bring up. Okay. Okay. Do you have a certain time before? Yes. Yes. When's this special town deadline? Well, you're going to decide tonight. Oh, okay. Hang around. Um, <laughs> but it needs to be by September 3rd. It needs to be submitted. September. If you wanted September. a special town meeting, which requires 100 signatures. So you have to so have you about submit a it. So with the 100 you signatures. You get 100 more. Okay. No months. later than I'm going to say September 2nd. And you'll need the At the absolute drop rate. And you need the language before that. Yes. yes. And that has to be written right. Yeah. Um, yes. Right, so you, yeah. Or we can we can help with that too, right, Jim? We'll look at it, or the moderator will look at it and say it should be worded differently. Yeah, I mean, Stephen, you all, you want to get it. You want to get it right on the petition. So Steve should just whip something up, send it over to us. We can look at it and make sure it's right. So when it goes on the bar, it doesn't get it's correct and it doesn't get thrown out on a technicality. We don't lose on its merits as opposed to getting thrown off the Right. Great. Great. Great.
Thanks for coming in. Thanks for everything we saw. Sorry. Go back. Okay. Moving right along to the next item. Sure. Discussion vote sure. for the special town meeting date and location. All right. Jim, what is the uh, or Lorraine, you just said September 7th? Yeah, fairly well, fairly self-explanatory town meeting will be in November 4th, Monday, November 4th. The gym is available. That's the case, and they would open the water on August 20th and close it on September 3rd, so they have two weeks. Anyone have any questions on that? Um, yes. I messed up, Mr. Chair, Mr. Board High Chair. So we have, you, you be, um, we've been proposed three dates in that week, and I inadvertently scheduled a trip that I wasn't really thinking about the staff, you guys, sorry. Um, for that weekend, and Monday will be difficult for me to get back. You could go on without me, but obviously I would prefer to be there. Would be the same. Um, I'm looking at my points. <laughs> what did you say? It wouldn't be the same. <laughs> Who said that? Sean? I'm here for entertainment. I'm here all night. Does the fourth the only night we can do it? I think. Can we do the fifth and the sixth? Where's the gym? Fourth all those dates are available. Oh, we traditionally have Tommy on uh, Monday night, but there's a caring box, right? Caring so, so I put to you, I can, I obviously this is my mistake, and if it's the board's preference, then um, I'll just. We got. It. Anyone have a problem with the fifth or the sixth? I don't. Karen, probably calendar. Oh, right. never mind. I was. Um, it says November, but it's really. <laughs> and he's the the well, the only nights, you know, right. yeah. if you do the fifth, you'll have a six at the back. Right. What'd you say? If you, if you, I'm just suggesting if you select the fifth, you would have the six at the back. So I would recommend that you select the fifth. Thursday, Thursday. Do we have a sense of how long? I don't want to go to Thursday because. Uh, there are travel plans on the back end of the week. Bye, guys. Thanks for coming. Hey, you're welcome. So, you're going to be Tuesday, Wednesday? Yep. Karen, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, go with you? Yep. So, you're going right. to be for November 5th. 5th. The 6th is, is a second night option. Yes. Yeah, That's right here now. Yeah. Oh, what do you mean? Tuesday's Brookfield, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, I didn't change. You said you'd be back. Oh, I haven't changed the name because I, I just. What day is good? Is the six? No, no, that's fine. I mean, I. The six is better for you. The six is better, but Lorraine's right. If for some reason we have to do two later, then we're messed up. So I'll just figure. I've, we'll have to do two later. I have to change my planes regardless, so it doesn't matter. Okay. So. All right. So can we have a motion to? No, you're right. Make it on for the backup for this I mean, I move to designate uh, Tuesday, November 5th, 2019, um, the date for this fall special town meeting. At the Citroen High School gym at 7 p.m. At the Citroen High School gym. Is, put your phone down and read the I'm putting the date in my calendar. <laughs> Second. Because apparently I didn't. Second by Mr. Harris for the discussion. Seeing none, it is unanimous. Good job. All right, now we have a drain layers license. Can I have a motion to approve a drain layers license for D.H. Smith and Sons, LLC? So moved. Yeah. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. We have two, a discussion vote on two board committee appointments. The first one yes. is Mass Port Authority Advisory Committee. Hold on, let me get that. Uh, move to appoint the following individuals for a term of one year until a successor is named. Mass Port Authority Advisory Committee, Brad Washburn. Yeah. Logan Air Committee, do the other? Logan Air Community Advisory Committee, Brad Washburn. That's Second. Right. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. it's unanimous. Great. Hey, Brad. Do we have any leads on reports? Karen, any? Uh, I don't know. Which Karen? Sorry, that end? No, no. Um, just two quick, three things, quick. 
Um, EDC, the reminder that there will be the Gates Master Planning Meeting on um, August 13th at 6, I'm sorry, it's the Master Planning Committee held at Gates on August 13th at 6.30. Um, I also want to just remind the board that um, the Planning Board will be meeting this, thir uh, this Thursday at 7 o'clock and they will be discussing both the Senior Center and the Drew Project, which is nearing, the Drew Project is nearing completion of their review. And finally, um, the Beach Committee um, will be coming before us at the beginning of September to give us an update to what they've been up to. Okay. Sean? No, this Karen? Maura? I just want to thank the Coastal Advisory Commission. I think their uh, public event was really well attended. About 85 people attended. I was unable to go, but I heard it was uh, very well received. And well, I did go, and it was very well attended. The uh, presenters did a great job. Um, you know, Kevin and the committee and uh, Brad and Neil, they all did a great job presenting, answered questions. There wasn't really anything, the WAD stuff came up again, but, um, but it was very informative. There wasn't a lot of, it was really taking information that we probably already you know and disseminating out to some people, but it was very good got a lot out of it. So thank, thank you guys for having that. Um, and that's all I have for that. Any correspondences? Um, quick, uh, one for a Kino machine yeah. at Kino the machine Voyager. Kino machine Voyage has been approved. And uh, notification of tour uh, to the South, the South Shore will be held Saturday, 20, September 21st. And it's either 25 or a double loop for 50 miles, and it comes. It spends. It spends 9.2 of those miles in situ. So we don't have to approve that. But that's a special event that we have every year. You don't approve special events that are done every year. You only approve new special events. So we're just informing you of it in the upcoming events. Session. All right. Good. Um, and the next thing is approval of minutes. Could I have a approval move to accept the minutes for July 23rd, 2019 for the board of selectmen meeting? Move to accept the minutes for July 23rd, 2019 board of selectmen meeting. Second. Second. <laughs> Second by Ms. Conley. Further discussion? Any none? All in favor? Aye. 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 So, um, Chair, one more thing just to make the board aware because it came in during the meeting. Uh, last night, the police received complain about a loud basketball in the high school at 11.30. So the officers showed up and had a back and forth with the young men. And in the spirit of community policing, the officer said, if you make a half-court shot, you can finish the game. And of course, they filmed it, and he buried the shot. It was posted on Instagram, and as of right now, it's had over two and a quarter million views in the really? last five Oh, really? Hours. That's so great. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Wait, wait, wait. My Instagram account. And I have to say, I've got a house of highlights. It was on Instagram. Instagram. Instagram account. It's also on the page of Legend Online. Just made the page of Legend Online. Oh, wow. Who made it? According to Deputy Thompson, Fox News is calm. <laughs> really? So yeah, that's, that's a great story. Who made the shot? Huh? Who's, what's the kid's name? I, I don't know. Uh, Two, over two and a quarter million views in five hours. Wow. That's almost that's as many as our meetings get on a regular. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great. Um, let's do half court shots then. <laughs> Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, I just wanted to, and I know you do as well, uh, comment on Heritage Days. I believe went out pretty unscathed, to my knowledge. Um, I don't know if Jim, did any report from you on that, any feedback. Uh, with regards to any activity that we may not have been aware of. Uh, there I was, thought it was a great event. There were a couple of instances on Friday night. Okay. Uh, I don't see the full report, but I did run the Chief Stewart. Um, there were a couple of instances on Friday night. And I'll get that information over the board once I have it. But aside from that, uh, nothing fantastic in that and very well. Um, I thought the Bear Garden worked well. You know, there were some comments that half the seats were empty, but they that's because they were in the Bear Garden right behind those. Yeah, yeah and I think uh, there was tents in the bear guard, so I think people were getting out of it. It was, yeah, it was hot sitting on those yeah. benches, so I think they were going back to the bear guard. They did a nice job. But they did. They had games. You know, yeah. they had games in there. They had places to sit. It was not a, uh, you know, it was, it was really a family event, so I think uh, 
Marty and Matt did a good job. Yeah, they estimated over 30,000 people went through the average space. Well, can I ask Why? another question about that? And I'm, I'm glad to see it. They allowed the parking on Kent Street. Yes, they From, did. Yeah, because I did in, in years past. We've all got the phone calls well, and the letters, nasty letters that people got tickets coming down to spend money. And so they will never come back to this town. So I did see that they must have allowed it on both sides. A lot of people took the buses, but a lot of people don't see it or don't, whatever. And two cars can still get by, you just have to go slower. I'm glad to see that they allowed that. And there was just a, just the whole police presence there did a great job, you know. Um, we also got a letter from just to clean the cleanliness of it. I saw Timmy down there doing yeah. work. Um, police officers, they really yeah. did a great job keeping them in the Thank, Thank you. Can I ask you one other question, Jim? Um, for any organization to knock on doors in Central, do they have to come before the police station to get a permit or permission? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's in our bylaws. It's not. Uh, it's not in our bylaws, no. We don't that. have a solicitation. Uh, you, can't, you can't ban it. Um, no, I didn't say to ban it, but just just to make sure it's legit. I mean, so a young boy came to our house, I think, it was Saturday or Sunday, and saw something, and you know, it's probably a great cause. I mean, it was legitimate, but what if they're not so legit? I think if at least the police or somebody could read those. So you want to have a requirement that they have to register with the police department that they have to have identification and they have to right. inform the police where they're going to be on right. any particular day. So if someone calls up and says, is someone coming to my door, the police say, yeah, he's got a, he's got a permit, he's licensed. I don't know how you guys feel about it. It doesn't happen that often. It doesn't happen to me. I had a guy knock on my door when I was in Nola. I said, is a permit from the town? He said, yeah, the town gave you a permit. So that's kind of funny because I am the town. I didn't give you a permit. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, we can draft something about to do a bylaw. I just, 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 I mean, sometimes as a kid going door, they'll sell a candy bar the other day. And that's, but, yeah. It's like a professional solicitation. Right, that's, the energy, you wouldn't make the Jehovah's Witnesses come in, would you? They still have to get a permit. Again, you can't bid it. It gets into interstate commerce, it gets into a whole bunch of other things. Religious rights, freedom of speech. But you need to come in and just tell the police and we believe they have IDs and fill out forms so we know that so-and-so is going door to door in this neighborhood at a particular time. And when people call us and say, yeah, we know it's about that. Right. Otherwise, you're using yeah. police resources to drive down there and find what's going on. But you can't deny it. You cannot deny it. Right. I don't know if I said deny it, but I just, I, because I maybe I heard that other towns that don't allow it, but I can't recall. But I just, at least, I think they should be. I did work at a town where the board just said no. It came to the board and the board did not allow it to a no solicitation, period. I said, somebody's going to get sued this night, but they'll learn how to do it. They just said no. Yeah. Hmm. Well, all right. On that note, could I have a motion to adjourn and sign documents? So moved. Second. Second one was coming. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all. Thank you.